All right, they're also live coming to you from Southern California here. Just up to 2 o'clock in the afternoon. My calendar says it's July 7th, 2015 already. Whoa, lots of stuff to get into. A lot of headlines. Man, oh man, just playing some of the old tunes. And some uh, of my favorite by Petra. Oh, when have you heard that name? All right, yeah. Uh, what's that? Uh, I played uh, Lord, I Lift Your Name on High. Didn't I play that one? Song of Moses for a couple of bars there. I love you, Lord. I did play that one. Oh, and of course, when will the world know that we need Jesus? Oh, I was listening to that song. If you want to uh, sing along with me, oh, 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 and tap your feet and jump around. <laughs> Tune in a little bit earlier every day. I'm here Monday through Friday, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, Sunday mornings, 10 a.m. All California time, Uh You you will uh, uh, enjoy the music. I can't get into the, to the demonic New World Order music. Uh, that they're playing a lot now. It's just so demonic. I mean, yes, we've always had demonic music, but there's just so much, it's so much deeper and darker as a whole. There's a whole lot more. I mean, I, hey, uh, there's always been evil, satanic music. <laughs> I remember during high school, I shared a locker with a guy named Don, and uh, and I'm telling you, he he hated me. I, I seemed to, I could beat him in track, I could, uh, I was very, uh, I guess, uh, popular in some areas, yet I served Jesus, yeah, he would, in the morning, uh, when they would uh, start school, high school, I was in a public school, uh, it was actually a public school, but most of the teachers were Jewish, most of the students in the high school, in that area of the city, were Jewish, <laughs> can you believe it, yeah, but it was a public high school. And uh, I used to uh, hold the Bible study. Yeah, I, I, at 16 and 17 and 18, I just said, you know what, by the way, if anybody wants to show up in room 203, whatever, after school, you know, for a short Bible study, uh, you know, and they would announce it, the vice president, uh, vice president, vice principal. <laughs> I know Biden wouldn't do that, uh, but I can, I can see that vice president's face. He would announce it, all right? Uh, Daryl's going to have a Bible study, and it was a Jewish school. And, and we'd talk about Jesus. And I think my first uh, topic that I did in that high school was about the name of Jesus. Oh, the name of Jesus. <laughs> Not a lot of Jews showed up, to be honest with you, but they sure watched me, yeah. Uh, the Gentiles showed up, yeah. The Jews, you know, it wasn't that popular. The Jewish girls said, hey, Daryl, I want to date you. All right, I'll become, uh, you know, I'll listen to you. I don't know if they said become a Christian, but I'll date you, <laughs> even if you are. Uh, well, you know, <laughs> I, didn't really, I didn't really know too much about dating because nobody was basically saved. Uh, nobody was saved in my household yet. Uh, we didn't have a Bible in my house. I had to find a Bible on the street when I was 11. So I was very green when it came, a newbie when it came to dating. I had no idea what the heck was going on. And uh, so I had to find what the Bible said. And <laughs> I finally found out that you're not supposed to date anybody. You're not supposed to, uh, you know, go in that direction at all unless the person's born again, spirit filled, et cetera, et cetera. Do not be unequally yoked together. Uh, I, could, I could go into that. Uh, anyways, uh, so... Um, some of the Jewish girls would just go, hey, but I, you know, I, I won't really accept Jesus, but I'll date you. <laughs> Whoa, good thing. Listen, I'll tell you this. Good thing that Daryl Lawson got saved early. I tell you that right now. Hello. Uh, because it would have been a totally different story. <laughs> Daryl would have been out of control <laughs> during high school and, and, and thereafter. All right. <laughs> but I was thinking about the name of Jesus. Uh, when I found the Bible on the street, I just fell in love with the name of Jesus. Not the name of religion, not the name of the Roman Catholic Church, was, which was right across the street from where I, where I grew up. Not, you know, and the Roman Catholic school, which my parents sent me to. And I finally escaped after I read the Bible. I realized, uh-oh, uh, this group of uh, people call themselves Christians, but they're not. These people say they believe in the Bible and obey it, but they don't. <laughs> And everything they do is anti-Bible. I'm out of here. And so I escaped <laughs> from the prisoner of war camp I call the Roman Catholic Church. Yeah. And I wish people would take my advice and run. The Bible tells you and tells everybody to run from false religion on the earth. Run from the Roman Catholic Church, which basically controls most religion on the earth right now. Yeah. 
So the Roman Catholic Church controls Islam. Oh, I know people don't like to hear that, but nevertheless, the Roman Catholic Church, the Vatican, they control Islam. They control the Mormons. Oh, oh. They even control the Jews. Oh, oh, can I? oh yeah, they do. Israel is basically controlled right now as a whole by the Vatican. Jerusalem is basically owned by the Vatican. And they're waiting for the exact moment one of these days to bring Obama and the Pope in there. They're going to they're gonna try to cause so much chaos. Obama and the Pope are going to try to cause so much chaos in the next two years, 2015 and 2016, as much as they can to try to uh, bring their headquarters into Jerusalem. Now, they, they, they may or may not accomplish that in 2015, 2016. Time will tell, right? But that's on their agenda. That's their plan. Obama and the Pope plan to crash the economies. Hello? Everybody and their dog, uh, you know, uh, you know if, if you know anything about the stock market, is talking about China. I talked about China yesterday. China's stock market is teetering, all right? Alibaba, you know who he is? Anyways, he's losing a lot of money. Uh, the Chinese economy, whoa, is on the brink. And I think, I said this yesterday. Now, listen, I said this, I, I'll, let, me, let, me, let me preface this. Let me just say this. The Chinese economy has always been unstable. You know, the Chinese economy uh, uh, grew and, uh, you know, their military and their economy grew. But it was always kind of uh, smoke and mirrors. It was always a uh, type of, a kind of a mirage. You know, it's there, but it's not really there. Yeah, because the you can't build, you know, uh, an, eco a, an economy uh, the way China built their economy. It was always, you know, uh, uh, side by side with the New World Order. The New World Order used China. Let me say it this way. The New World Order, which is basically, the, you know, the Rothschild families, the Illuminati, the Bilderbergs, the Vatican... The British royal family, etc. The British government, you know, <clears throat> the U.S. China was built uh, by the New World Order. Now she's balking from it, and so anything the New World Order builds is crappy. So any country, any economy, the New World Order builds is terrible. Uh, can, everything they touch is cursed, and so they use China as a prostitute. The, the, the whore of Babylon, the mother of harlots, used and created China, the Chinese economy as another prostitute around the world. And, and yeah, speaking about that, I did some, I was looking at some research this morning about, well, what, what crossed my mind. Welcome, welcome to Daryl Lawson Live, by the way. I'm here Monday through Friday, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, Sunday morning, 10 a.m. You can all see that on DarylLawsonLive.com. What, what crossed my mind this morning, uh, I started to read some of the articles about the Apple Watch. It's not doing very well, you know, and uh, Apple's taking a hit on that. I mean, people don't wear watches as much anymore. I mean, I wear a, you know, a, a running device to track my mileage, by the way. I did about 8 point, was it 8.2 miles this morning. Nice, cloudy, overcast with a little tinge of... Uh, a uh, little bit of, of uh, sprinkling rain. You can't really even see it on the ground, but if you're running, it's hit, hitting you, which is so nice to run in. Yeah, it took me about an hour and a half to, to run about 8.2 miles. I shouldn't have had those M&Ms last night. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> I did cheat a little bit last night, but I thought, well, it's mostly peanuts. The only thing I, the only thing I don't like about M&Ms is the outer coating. It's the... Uh, it's, it's all the, the dyes. It's the blue, the, the yellow. Ugh. And so I'm trying to stick to just, you know, if you're going to eat chocolate, you know, covered peanuts, eat the dark, you know, the organic, uh, uh, dark chocolate peanuts. Yeah, et cetera, et cetera. Dark, dark chocolate, and, dark chocolate and the peanuts. Yeah, it's better for you than M&M's. Yeah. Anyways, I could feel that rumbling in my stomach. Uh, you know, about, what was it, about halfway? <laughs> I thought to myself, no, nah, I shouldn't have ate those last night. <laughs> Because in the morning, you might not feel it last night, but in the morning when you're running, hello, uh, where's the nearest restroom? Hello. Yeah. And so I thought, no, not a good idea to run that before a marathon <laughs> either. <laughs> but anyways, I was thinking about uh, the stock markets this morning. I was thinking about, uh, but what came back to my mind was, uh, uh, did I say, did I say Google watches? I, I meant Apple watches. Yeah. Apple, the company of Apple. I did a video. I reposted it this morning. Apple watches. That's what I, that's what I meant to say. 
and how uh, I, there's something about Apple that can I just say this the way I I, I I feel I feel that Apple has ticked off Jesus. Can I just say that? Yeah, I, somehow, some way, uh, the Apple company has ticked off Jesus. All right, Jesus is not happy with Apple. And I reposted my video I did a little short time ago about Apple uh, uh, going bankrupt, a app, the end of Apple. Take a look at my video on that on DarrellLawsonLive.com. Just click on my YouTube videos. It's actually here on live stream as well. Uh, uh, whatever. You can find it on live stream. I have about a thousand videos on YouTube and I have half those videos, about 500 on live stream. So I keep backups. Live stream is my backup as well. I have two channels on, uh, on, on YouTube. One is my regular channel. One is my backup channel. Uh, so if you want to know why I have two YouTube channels, one is a backup channel, yeah, just in case one goes down or some kind of funky, chunky, whatever, <laughs> monkey goes on there. But I, I as I was uh, uh, just praying this morning and as I was running and as I was thinking and just meditating on the Bible this morning <clears throat> and praying, I came across the, uh, oh, since I was reading from Daniel yesterday, the book of Daniel on the Bible, I was reading from Daniel 3, I went into Daniel 4, and then I jumped into John, Daniel 5, well, duh. <laughs> and there was the, uh, of course, there's King Nebuchadnezzar, Babylonian king, but then he had, some people say it's his grandson, and his name's uh, King Belshazzar. Anyways, whether it was his son or his grandson, whatever. Uh, king of uh, the, the, the next king of Babylon, or the... Uh, I think there was dual kings in Babylon at the time. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar was ruling, and then King uh, Belshazzar uh, is related to in the Bible as his son, but some say it's his grandson. Either way, King Belshazzar of Babylon ticked off Jesus. I'm telling you. Do you ever read chapter 5? I know you have. Daniel chapter 5. King Belshazzar, king of Babylon, uh, not Nebuchadnezzar, uh, but his... Uh, uh, some people say that... Uh, they were still alive at the same time. His maybe his grandfather, King Nebuchadnezzar, and King Belshazzar, the grandson, was was alive at the same time. Anyways, King Belshazzar of Babylon ticked off Jesus. Oh, and you ever hear the the saying, "The writings on the wall"? Well, that's from the book of Daniel, chapter five. King uh, ba of Babylon, Belshazzar, ticked off Jesus, and uh, his empire was over. Yeah, that night, yeah, when, when Belshazzar saw some, some hand, some, uh, he, he would have called it a magical hand, but just a hand <laughs> by itself, writing on the wall, whoa, and the writing couldn't be interpreted. Nobody knew what it meant, all right? They didn't have Google Translate, right? <laughs> they needed Daniel Translate. <laughs> by the way, it's tea time. Cheers. So Daniel came in and told uh, King Belshazzar what it meant and basically said, hey, you suck. You offended Jesus and your days are over. And when I was reading that from Daniel chapter 5, you know, studying about the, about the kingdom of Babylon, the king of Babylon, it reminded me of, the, of 2015. It reminded me of, uh, of Apple. It reminded me about people on the earth today that even though the Great Tribulation is about to happen, the Great Tribulation, not just a tribulation period or a time of trouble. The Bible calls it the time of Jacob's trouble, which is different than normal trouble. It's the time of the Antichrist going nuts on the earth. Yeah, who is Obama, by the way? The Christ is Jesus. The Antichrist is Obama. All right, keep saying that, but uh, I have to say that because people are still going, I don't know where I am. It's like, you know, spiritually, a lot of Christians are out to lunch, you know. Uh, they've accepted Jesus, but that's about it. And a lot of them have backslidden. A lot of them have turned lukewarm because they don't pray and they don't get filled with the Holy Spirit on a daily basis. And so they just go backwards. <laughs> I watched the end of the Tour de France. Uh, it was at the third stage. It was uh, yesterday. But I watched it, you know, uh, uh, throughout the uh, last night and whatever. And they were going up this hill. I'm telling you, it's like, you know, if you don't have the strength, you go backwards. You stop. <laughs> the third stage of the Tour de France. They go 2,000 miles. Can you believe it? In 21 days. Yeah. About 100 miles a day. Wow. Try to do 15 miles a day. That's that's hard. And I'm doing about 15 miles every two days. So to, I did 15 miles yesterday on the bike, and I'll do 15 miles tomorrow. I'm going to try to get up to 20 miles. But imagine doing 100 miles a day. 
Yeah, they do that. I think they do that in the triathlons. They do. Uh, uh, they swim about two miles. They bike about a hundred miles, and then they do a full marathon, twenty six point two. Yeah. Whoa! But think about doing a hundred miles a day, not just on flat ground. They went through Belgium. I think they went through Holland. I think at the beginning, then Belgium, and then of course they end up in France. That's about, it's over two thousand miles. But wow! Wow! But it's like that spiritually. If you if you don't train every day. If you don't uh, eat, you know, every day the right food, spiritually, you're going to go backwards. And so many people, yeah, they may have said the sinner's prayer, uh, you know, but they're going backwards. Hello, you got to get born again, and then you got to stay born again. I don't know why that's so hard for people to understand that, but Paul said at the end of his life, I've kept the faith. Well, I don't know about keeping the faith. <laughs> you got to keep the faith. Yeah, it's not just a saying on a bumper sticker, all right? It's not just a saying, keep the faith, man. You're, whoa, what's up, man? Keep the faith. That's, that's more than that. You actually have to do it, all right? <laughs> I fought the good fight of faith. You have to keep it to the end. Jesus said, if you're faithful to death, if you're faithful to the next rapture, uh, you know, 6,000 6, 6, years of people have come and gone. A lot of people have died, <laughs> But it was up to them to be faithful to death. Yeah, uh, it doesn't matter if you start the race, great. If you middle, but if you have to, if you don't finish the race, whoa, well, you don't get the prize, right? That's that's what we're talking about with our faith and with Jesus. Yeah, I know people don't like it and they just want to say, you know, that's not part of the Bible, but it is. You know, uh, why don't people want to uh, want, want to know that? It's because they're lazy buttheads and they just want to do what they want to do. All right, and it, and I rather warn people now. Uh, because I'm going to be held responsible uh, to Jesus about you know uh, uh, either telling them or not telling the people. So I'm going to I I like the safest way possible. I like the teaching and the doctrine and the biblical foundation of the rapture. It's the safest way in these end times. Be prepared 24 seven to leave the planet. <clears throat> All right. Because uh, if I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah, what's that thing? Uh, uh, the price is wrong, Bob. Then there's no harm done. But if other people are wrong and there is a rapture, oh, then if they're not ready, it sucks to be them. All right. So I always take the safest way possible. And of course, if you watch all my videos and go through the Bible, you can see the <clears throat> uh, uh, raptures in the Bible. There's been many raptures, many transportations or, or transporting of people that have been alive and didn't die from the earth to heaven. Enoch, Elijah, hello! <clears throat> All right, and then people that have died and rose from the dead, and their bodies came back together with their spirits and their souls, and they went to heaven. Happened on the on the resurrection of Jesus. They could see uh, uh, saints that have died came back to life, and they, where were they going? They were going to heaven. Jesus was raptured to heaven, yeah. After he rose from the, uh, rose from the dead, uh, his uh, spirit and soul came back into his body, he was raised from the dead, and then his body, spirit, soul, and body, was taken to heaven. That was a rapture. So people would say that's just a doctrine made up by boogie boogie man. What? You don't even know your Bibles, all right? So the next rapture is upon us, which hopefully millions of people will leave <laughs> the earth, and if you're born again spirit-filled, you're going to be gone. Bye-bye. Going to a wedding banquet. Oh, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Love it. And then, of course, that, there's going to be another rapture after that. It's going to be the 144,000 Jewish believers from uh, 12,000 from every tribe. They will accept Jesus as their Messiah after we're gone. And they will be marked with a special mark of protection. And the Antichrist, Obama, and the, and the Pope won't be able to kill them. Oh, that's the only group of people that can't be killed. During the Great Tribulation will be that, all right? Jesus wants to save you from that Great Tribulation, but if people want to stay, that's up to them. You know, just just sin. Just continue to sin, and you'll stay, all right? <laughs> but if you do repent during the Great Tribulation period, 99.999% uh, uh, of all Christians probably on the earth will be killed, yeah, because Obama will, will, will hunt you down. Yeah, anyways, uh, about the 144,000 Jews, they will be raptured. Hello! And then don't forget about the two witnesses, the two prophets in Jerusalem, who will arrive shortly in the near future. They will be preaching Jesus in Jerusalem. Oh, 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 yeah. And they, of course, will be killed by Obama. And then they will be raised up, I think three days later, the Bible says. And then they will be raptured, spirit, soul, and bodies, to heaven. Oh, right in the midst of everybody's face. In your face, Antichrist. Love it. 
and everybody will freak out. Yeah, and because pe people on the earth will have heard of the rapture because they'll they'll know that you know people are missing, and then they'll see the hundred and forty four thousand go bye bye. Where are they? And the Antichrist will try to kill them, but can't. And then the Antichrist will try to kill the two witnesses, and then uh, he won't be able to for a while. And then when they finish their ministry on the earth, finish their preaching, the Antichrist will come against them, and their their force field will go down. They will be uh, uh, killed. Uh, their bodies will lie in the streets for three days, and everybody will party. The New World Order will party, because these two prophets uh, uh, tormented Obama. Love it! Our job, your job, their job is to torment the New World Order. Yeah. <laughs> and then in front of everybody's face, the spirit of life, the Holy Spirit will come into them. And their spirit, souls, and bodies will, will, will come together. And they will be taken right in front of their faces. Whoa, to heaven. Oh, and that will freak people out, the Bible says. Yeah. Ah! They'll realize, hello. Uh, it already happened. It happened. And it's, and it's and, yeah. And <laughs> Wow. Anyways, and hopefully uh, people that didn't take the mark of the beast will get right. But if you take the mark of the beast, mark of Obama, in the near future, the technology on your right hand to worship his kingdom, you're going to go to hell. All right. Yeah. But hopefully some people will wake up when they see these events and whatever they have to do to keep their faith or keep the faith at the end. Uh, that's the, that's the key. All right. Jesus talks about that over and over and over and over from Genesis to Revelation, and especially if you if you. If you say, that's too much, I can't read the whole Bible in a month, well, just read the book of Revelation first. It's only 22 chapters, and Jesus in the first few chapters of the book of Revelation tell exactly what I'm saying. Yeah, some of you, he said, will be cast into prison for 10 days. Uh, keep uh, uh, your faith to the end, all right? Be faithful to death. Yeah, be faithful to death, and I'll give you the crown of life. Oh, what happens if you're not? And you're not getting the crown of life, and you will uh, go to hell. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the unpardonable sin is dying in your sins. All right. Yeah. There's only one in unpardonable sin. And it's basically the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, which is not what people say it is. Most people don't know what it is. The blasphemy, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is not repenting while you're alive, resisting the Holy Spirit until you die. And that's the unpardonable sin. All right. The sin that you don't repent of is unpardonable. <laughs> and I don't care what people say. I know. I know what I know. Anyways, uh, if you re read those scriptures slowly and understand them, put them all together, you understand that. Yeah. Oh. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Anyway, so it's my job. It's your job to remind people uh, the safest way. I get people. Well, you get people. We get people to go in the safest way uh, in life so that there's not many casualties or hopefully no casualties. Jesus said about his ministry, he said, uh, Father, I've lost none. The people that you gave me, I lost none. Oh! All right, he said, except uh, Judas, <laughs> which was a fulfillment of the scriptures anyway, the son of perdition, which is another name for Obama. Yeah, uh, Obama is a Judas. Yeah, he has betrayed the USA. He has betrayed his family. He has betrayed the world, all right? And he uh, will depopulate the earth and do more harm to the earth than all past dictators and crazy leaders for the last 6,000 years put together. So if you want to stay behind, just keep sitting, all right? Anyways, <clears throat> found the Bible on the street when I was a kid. Anyways, I'm thinking about the, uh, 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 these corporations and uh, like Apple and different uh, leaders and, and people in these last days that are really putting their, their hand in the face of Jesus and saying, and, and, and around the world and mocking the Bible and mocking the ways of Jesus and mocking the way of righteousness. Uh, they are in, they, listen, the Lord is slow to anger, but when he moves, and judges, and I'm not talking about the Great Tribulation, I'm talking for the last 6,000 years, I'm talking about today, I'm talking about before the Great Tribulation, during the Great Tribulation, and after the Great Tribulation, yeah, the Lord rules from heaven, and I just got this, uh, 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 this wind again of, of knowing, of revelation that, you know what, uh, uh, I say Google, yeah, Google too, but Apple has just raise their hand, raise their 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 fist in the in the face of God and, and said, We're too rich to fail. Oh, ever heard that before? We're too big to fail. Yeah. 
and, and, and Apple has said, we're too big to fail. We can do what we ever, whatever we want. And their new CEO or whatever, what's his name, Tim Cook, just raises his hand in the face of God, thinking that he's untouchable and his company cannot be harmed. We're too big to fail. And I'm telling you, uh, King Belshazzar thought he was uh, hot stuff. Uh, uh, his, his, his father or his grandfather, what, how, however it works out in history, uh, King Nebuchadnezzar, if you read Daniel 4, I'm looking at Daniel 5 right now, but Daniel 4, he got, uh, he got his butt kicked and he turned to Jesus. King Belshazzar, the, king, the next king of Babylon, didn't. And he was taken out. He was, bye-bye, bye-bye, and he didn't realize that he was operating in prime. Uh, let me just read this here. And, uh, I Sometimes I read this at the end, but let me just read this from Daniel 5 right now. And as we go through the headlines today, just keep this in mind, that I believe uh, uh, even before the next rapture, we're going to see the hand of God outstretched, the arm of God outstretched, the hand of God against corporations, against leadership, against people, even before the next rapture, and of course during the Great Tribulation, uh, and of course at the return of Jesus at the Battle of Armageddon. The Lord will put down his enemies. He will put all his enemies under his feet. Oh! Is that what... Not, does it, didn't he say that? Jesus is expecting... That's what the Bible says. All his enemies be put underneath his feet. Yeah. And I believe we're going to see that. And we are seeing that. You know? And uh, <clears throat> and China is, is, is not... You know, not really like that. It's not really falling in that category. China it was just always a... A prostitute created, the economy created by the Vatican and the New World Order. <clears throat> Anyways, it's tumbling, and it was always kind of meant to tumble. The EU was always meant to tumble. The EU was never uh, uh, never really built to last. You know, right? The Vatican uh, always you know, raises up prostitutes, raises up economies uh, in order for them to eventually die of disease. <laughs> right? <laughs> and so the EU was never meant to stay forever. It was only meant to... Uh, rip apart the sovereignty of the, of the individual countries in Europe. Same thing with China. China was always meant to be propped up just to be used as a hooker. Their, their economy. Now, don't um, separate the people, all right, of the countries, all right? Uh, you know, uh, the Chinese people are great people. It's just the governments around the world are crazy, all right? So, yeah, but the, the, the Chinese government was always raised up to be a, a, a paper uh, uh, dragon, really. But now uh, the, the, the government is basically saying, you know, we don't want to totally give up everything now to the New World Order. We, we paid the price to be here and blah, blah, blah. So, you know, their economy will eventually crumble. It looks like sooner than later. And uh, same thing with EU. The EU is crumbling right now. It was never meant to stay there. Uh, et cetera, et cetera. Anyways, what you got companies and corporations and leaders and uh, governments and kings and, and people right now and, co and corporate heads. Uh, and one of them is, uh, is Apple. And I, I, I've been saying this and I can just see in the near future, uh, the writing is on the wall with Apple. I'm not going to go through that again. I, I did see that. Uh, but if you, uh, and, and don't forget, uh, not only is the uh, the CEO, whatever, however they call him, the president or the big kahuna uh, of Apple. He is a total uh, anti-biblical character. Let me just say it like that. Uh, but don't forget that Apple also has m major factories in where? If you, if you, if you do research on, on Apple, where, 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 where does Apple have a, a, you know, some big factories? China! All right, so will the Chinese, uh, you know stumbling here with well, the Chinese disintegration of their markets. Uh, it will happen. It may not be today, but it's happening. It may not be totally today. Uh, maybe the, the tumble, uh, the economy tumbling in, in China will affect, major, majorly affect Apple. Ever think about that? I was thinking about that this morning. You know, they have huge factories. There's, I think it's called, Fo is it Foxconn? And there's another one, uh, Petra, whatever, uh, Patra, Khan, whatever. There's different names that that that, that uh, Apple gives to their companies or their uh, uh, huge uh, factories over there. Some of the factories, some of the employees. Uh, uh, I think sometimes they even have like you know hundred thousand employees, a million employees in some of these places in China. Uh, well, they have a billion people, right? So, anyways, uh, I, I, I'm trying to look at the pieces. How how would Apple fall? 
How would the writing be on the wall, not just with Apple, but other people? Now, I know the Antichrist and the false prophet, Obama and the Pope Francis, will not uh, be removed from power until Jesus returns at the Battle of Armageddon. That, that should be a given. Right? So people that are hoping and wishing and praying that Obama leaves power. Ha! <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> Stop what? Stop wishing. He's not going to leave power until Jesus removes him. I'm talking about the Pope and I'm talking about Obama. Right, the false prophet and uh, the Antichrist will not be removed from power until the Battle of Armageddon. So just stop wasting your prayers on that. Now you can pray that they would be exposed, that they would be hindered, that the, that the hand of God would push them back. That's, you know, that's a good prayer to pray. pray. Good prayer to pray, yeah. Uh, but they're not going to be removed, all right? So that's wishful thinking, but it's not biblical thinking anyways. I think what we're seeing right now is a major uh, uh, hand of God hitting, and, and it's good, uh, uh, and pushing. Look, look, if you think about Egypt, when Moses was alive thousands of years ago, when he uh, told the uh, Pharaoh, hey, you need to do what Jesus wants. You need to let the, uh, the children of Israel march through the land and go and serve God in Israel, you know, in, in the promised land. And, and the government said, no! <laughs> well, we know how that turned out, all right? Moses won, all right? Pharaoh lost, all right? And you see the mighty hand of God come against an empire in a very short period of time. And, the, and at that time, at the time of Moses, the world was ruled. Wow. Uh, 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 the, the empire that ruled <clears throat> was the Egyptian empire, all right? And don't forget, Egypt is part of Africa, right? Egyptians are Africans. I know some people forget that. Uh, I, I, I know I mentioned to, Afri uh, to Egyptians, well, you're African. Well, you know, well, we're Egyptian. Yeah, but you're African. I mean, hello, get over it. Uh, you know, you're Northern Africa. Anyways, I know that uh, it probably stems from the fact that <clears throat> they were once, once, you know, the Egyptians once ruled the world. And their kingdom was uh, brought down. Uh, and it's, yeah, yeah, if you come against Jesus, you're going to lose, all right? And <laughs> the Babylonians found out that, the Assyrians, the, the Egyptians, uh, the Babylonians, uh, the Greeks found that out, <clears throat> even today. <laughs> the Roman Empire found that out. And Obama and the Pope will find that as well. In these last days, the revised Roman Empire. But I just, you know, it's like, wow, we're seeing... Uh, these people say that we're too big, we can do whatever we want. You know what? Uh-oh. That's what Pharaoh said. That's what Ramsey said. Bye bye That's what King Belshazzar, Daniel 5.1 says, Many years later, King Belshazzar gave a great feast for 1,000 of his nobles. Kind of sounds like Obama partying here. And he drank wine with them. Ever, you know, if you ever want to learn about alcohol in the Bible... Even many Christians don't know about alcohol. I know it's a, it's a touchy subject, but I don't care. I like to do things because I'm going to be held accountable for what I give to, to people and teach them. <laughs> so I give them as best I can and raw, all right, raw organic Bible. <laughs> no GMO Bible scriptures here, yeah. And if you want to learn about alcohol from the Bible, watch my video on DarylLawsonLive.com. Click on my YouTube videos or just type in any engine search, Daryl Lawson, YouTube. But the devil doesn't want you to know about alcohol. Yeah, and it's a great teaching. And even a lot of Christians have no idea, uh, even to this day, I can't believe it, 6,000 years later, Christians still don't know do, 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 what the Bible says about alcohol. Well, I, you know what? They could, but they don't want to. Right? Yeah, let me just say it like that. Okay. Anyways, uh, King Belshazzar gave a great feast party, and he drank wine with them. Verse 2. <clears throat> While Belshazzar, which is the king of Babylon, Daniel 5, 2, was drinking the wine... He gave orders to bring in the gold and silver cups that uh, that his predecessor, Nebuchadnezzar, so either his dad or his, or, or his grandfather, whatever, had taken from the temple in Jerusalem. Now we know uh, from history that the uh, two Jewish temples of history, uh, the, uh, the uh, temple of, of, of Solomon, Solomon's temple, and then Zerubbabel's temple, or Herod's temple, the second temple, they were both destroyed. Bye bye all right, so this here is uh, talking about the first temple, which was destroyed by the Babylonians. Anyway, it says, while well, Belshazzar was drinking the wine, he gave orders to bring in the gold and silver cups that his predecessor, Nebuchadnezzar, had taken from the temple in Jerusalem. So they took the loot, right, from the temple. Hello, gold and silver cups. Okay, he wanted, this guy, Belshazzar, king, 
wanted to drink from them with his nobles. All right, he, he was he was on he was on a power trip. So he wanted to drink drink from the cups. All right, he wanted to. Uh, God gave him the victory over the Jews and to destroy the temple. The temple became an idol. The Jews became pri- proudful and stubborn and rebellious. And God said, hey, fine. You know, worshiping the temple, you're worshiping uh, 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 things, but you're not worshiping me. So the temple was destroyed. Same thing with the, the second temple. You know, people want to know why the temple was destroyed. That Those are the reasons. Right? Okay. So this guy's got the loot, but he's becoming very proud and arrogant in front of God and, and publicly. He wanted to drink from these g- goblets from the Jewish temple. <laughs> so verse 3, so they brought these gold cups taken from the temple, all right? You don't want to tick off Jesus, all right? All right, the Jews deserved it, all right? But don't tick off Jesus. Uh, they brought these gold cups taken from the temple. The house of God in Jerusalem was gone bye-bye. And the king and his nobles, his wives, his concubines drank from them. Why did you do that? I mean, you push the envelope, and this is what you're seeing. I think, I think, I think this is what Apple has done. I think this is what you're seeing uh, uh, on the earth. There's a mixture of different things going on, but you see um, certain leaders that are really, you know, and then, uh, and even it's going to get worse. People that you know uh, claim to be working for Jesus, if they're if they're doing wrong things publicly and really pushing the envelope, they'll be removed really, you know, quickly. There was a guy. La- I think it was last year was trying to push all the Christians to turn into Roman Catholics or to, you know, to get together with this ecumenical movement with the Catholic Church, blah, blah, blah. You know what happened to him? Uh, he rode his motorcycle in the front of a truck, all right? Boom! Bye-bye! Uh, it was like one month later. You, you, don't, you, know, you know, don't be crazy in these last days, all right? And if you do something publicly like that, you know, Jesus will hold up his name. Uh, and uh, Anyways... They brought these gold cups taken from the temple. Uh, and it says here, verse 4, While they drank from them, they praised their idols made of gold, silver, bronze, iron, wood, and stone. They praised it. So they're really mocking God and saying, Hey, we rule, we're God. Verse 5, Suddenly, don't you love that? Verse 5, Daniel 5, 5, Suddenly they saw the fingers of a human hand. Uh-oh. Freaky writing on the plaster wall of the king's palace near the lampstand. All of a sudden, this hand appears, these fingers, <laughs> and they're writing in the plaster on the wall by the light. Uh-oh. I mean, if that's not going to freak you out, that, I mean, that would freak me out. Wouldn't it freak you out? Whoa! So this guy is, uh, you know, praising their idols, drinking from the cups from the temple. Uh-oh. Now, they're in Babylon, right? Yeah. Suddenly, everybody sees fingers of a human hand writing on the plaster wall of the king's palace near the lampstand. The king himself saw the hand as it wrote. Whoa! Whoa! And this is where people, this is where the saying comes from, the writing on the wall. Yeah. <laughs> so everybody's looking going, uh-oh. Verse 6. Now, you know, he knew, uh, but chose to ignore the warnings of God. Verse 6. So the king's face uh, turned pale. <laughs> Sucker! With fear, for fright. His knees knocked together in fear and his legs gave way beneath him. Uh-oh. I mean, wouldn't you freak out? Ever see these videos where there's a haunted house and, the, you know, I'm talking about real paranormal demonic activity where, you know, they set up a camera because there's some demon, you know, you know, wreaking havoc, wreaking havoc in the house and you see doors open, pots flying, you know, <laughs> that's kind of freaky. I mean, yeah. Now, I know what it is. Some are just, you know, uh, 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 uh you know, they're just spoofing people on the, and they're just doing things like that. But I'm talking about people with wires and all that and, and camera tricks. But there are, are videos on YouTube where you can actually see uh, demons in rooms uh, throwing stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and these guys saw a hand on the wall. Now, it wasn't a demon. Uh, it was either the hand of God or an angel or whatever. His face freaked, it turned white and his knees knocked together and he fell down. Verse 7, the king shouted for all his wise people. Oh, his enchanters, astrologers, fortune tellers. <laughs> CNN, tell me what it means. ABC, tell me what it means. <laughs> MSNBC, all right, yeah. He said to the wise men of Babylon, uh, uh, you know, whoever can read this writing and tell me what it means will be dressed in purple robes and royal honor. 
of a gold chain pl placed around his neck. He'll become the third highest ruler in the kingdom. Now, this is another reference to the third highest ruler, meaning that this guy might have been the grandson. Might have been King, uh, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. It might have been the son. Uh, and then this might have been the grandson, because it does uh, 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 mention, well, actually, the third highest ruler in the kingdom. Now, let me rephrase that. Uh, so the person that was to interpret would be the third ruler. So there was two rulers at the time. This is what I'm trying to get at. Uh, they said the third highest ruler in the kingdom. Well, who's the first? Probably Nebuchadnezzar. This is probably the grandson or the son. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, yeah. So this is where you can read in the Bible and, and put the piece together that it looks like Nebuchadnezzar was probably still in power, and this was uh, uh, Belshazzar was second in power, uh, because they re reference verse 7. Uh, if you read the writing on the wall, nobody could. You become the third highest ruler in the kingdom. See, see, that's where you kind of figure the pieces out. Okay. Uh, but when all the... And see, now, now, now this Belshazzar, whether the son or the grandson, knew what the, what the grandfather or the father went, went through. He knew that God, Jesus, dealt with him and, and made him repent. <clears throat> but this guy was full of pride. This, this, this new king of Babylon was full of pride. <clears throat> That's why he was so freaked out. I'll make you third highest ruler. Verse 8, but when all the king's wise men had come in, none of them, none of them, none of them, all right, could read the writing or tell him what it meant. And this is kind of what's happening today. You have a lot of people on the news, most news media, doesn't. they don't even know what's going on. They can't read the writing on the wall. You have all these news events going on around the world. They don't know what's going on with ISIS. They don't know what's going on with Obama. They don't know what's going on with really China and Russia. It's always backwards. And a lot of the, even the religious leaders on the earth today, most of them don't know what's, what the writing on the wall is today. And what's the writing on the wall? Uh, the events that are, that are happening in the Bible right before our very eyes. You have the Antichrist in the White House as a U.S. president. You have the false prophet in the, over the Vatican as the Pope. You have uh, him being in power for six, six plus years. You have the Pope coming in recently to fulfill the last Pope of the Roman Empire, of the Roman Catholic Church. <clears throat> I mean, and uh, whoa! And so, you know, we're right at the end of the end of the end. So most people can't read the writing on the wall right now. We're, we're kind of like, uh, if you can read the writing on the wall, you have the Spirit of Daniel, you have the Holy Spirit. But a lot of people, the news, even Christians, most Christians don't even know what you know what the writing on the wall is right now. What's really happening before our very eyes? It's kind of sad, really. And none of them could read the writing or tell him what it meant. They don't even. They know people are saying, you know, I've been saying for years the rapture's coming, but you don't know how close the rapture, the next rapture is, until you know that the Antichrist is in the White House. Yeah, I, I mean, most most people are saying the rapture's coming, the rapture's coming, but. Uh, to know that the, that, the, that the Antichrist is in the White House, wow, that means we could leave any day, any hour, any moment. Yeah. <laughs> Verse 9. So the king grew even more alarmed and his face turned pale. Because <laughs> nobody could read the writing. <laughs> the people were also shaken. Verse 10. But when the queen mother, so obviously his mother or his grandmother, heard what was happening, she hurried to the banquet hall. She said to Belshazzar, Second in command, really. Long live the king. Don't be so pale and frightened. There is a man in your kingdom who, is, who has within him... There's a man in the kingdom who has within him the spirit. Oh, 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 oh. That's why 50% of all the Christians on the earth won't be going in the next rapture. Because they don't have the Holy Spirit. Now, they've had the Holy Spirit. Now, let me say this. Getting born again is, is, is a legal contract of having your sins washed away. All right, but then you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit on a daily basis and stay born again. You get into the marriage contract with Jesus and you have to stay faithful to Jesus. All right, hello? Why is that so difficult for people to understand that? They think that if they say a prayer, that's it. They're, they don't have to do anything else. It's crazy. It's just the beginning. All right, hello? There's a man in your kingdom, the, the queen mother said, <laughs> who has within him the spirit of the holy gods. <laughs> she really didn't know what to say, but she's basically trying to, to describe the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And she said, during Nebuchadnezzar's reign, here you go, this man was found to have insight. 
what's really happening. And you don't you don't see that you don't see much of that right now. Uh, insight into what's going on. That people you know people are just kind of guessing. People are just you know the blood moon. Oh, the blood moon well, it was more than just a blood moon. Hello. If you want to look at a sign, look at the White House. The the Antichrist in the White House is a million times bigger sign than the blood moon. <laughs> The false prophet over the Vatican, over the world, the Pope Francis, is, is a million times bigger sign than any blood moon. All right, so just put that in your spiritual pipe and smoke it, yeah. But most Christians can't even see, you know, what's right in front of them. Okay, anyway, because of the Holy Spirit. 50% of all Christians around the world will not make the next rapture. Jesus said because they don't keep the power of the Holy Spirit in their lives. There's no oil in them. Try to run your car or your vehicle with no oil. Suckers! During Nebuchadnezzar's reign, this man was found to have insight, understanding, and wisdom like that of the gods. <laughs> These are, you have heathens here, sinners trying, trying to you know, describe Daniel. Your predecessor, the king, your predecessor, King Nebuchadnezzar, made him chief over all the magicians. <laughs> well, duh. Enchanters, astrologers, and fortune tellers of Babylon. You know what the, uh, uh, you know, ABC, MS, uh, uh, ABC, MSNBC, CNN, CBS, ABC, the New World Order media, you know what they're, you know what, you know, really the, their description is? They're really just magicians. Yeah, Daniel 5.11. They're just really astrologers. Fortune tellers. Crooks. Right, yeah. Manipulating news around the world to cause people to think what they want them to think like. Yeah. Enchanters. That, that's what the New World Order media is, is really, really all about. They're just magicians. Removing the truth, giving you deception. Hello, smoke and mirrors, enchanters, astrologers, fortune tellers <laughs> of Babylon. That's what the New World Order media is. And sad to say, politicians and religious leaders today. <laughs> this man, Daniel, whom the king named Belshazzar, that was his uh, Babylonian name, has, accept, has exceptional ability and is filled, and is filled, see the mother knew, with divine knowledge and understanding. See, you don't understand what's going on today unless you're filled with the Holy Spirit daily. So I see a lot of videos on YouTube and people, it's like, you know, they're, they're trying to get in on the wave of what's going on, but they're to totally out to lunch. And you can tell uh, they, they may not even be born again. And if they got born again, they don't have much of a prayer life and they're not filled with the Holy Spirit. Yeah, there's a big difference, you can tell, because they don't have it within them. They're always trying to grasp for things out there because things are getting exciting and heating up. Uh, but because they don't have oil in their lamps, they, they, it's always out here somewhere, and they're just trying to hit and miss, and they're trying to do videos, and they're trying to write books and, and get on the on, on, on some kind of wave uh, because you know to make them popular or to get them hits on YouTube or get them hits on Facebook or what are you doing? Don't go into ministry without the Holy Spirit. All right, you're going to get your head chopped off. <laughs> it's ridiculous, and I see so many people. It's like. You know, they, 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 they try to get excited, but you can tell when someone does not, it doesn't have the Holy Spirit in them. You know, uh, 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 they have, you know, they have a form of godliness, there's something, you know, but they, de they deny the power they're in. And it's, you know, a lot of times it's because they're just dumb or they're hanging around with people that don't have the Holy Spirit and they've, you know, or they're just so infantile, they're so babyish. That it's just, uh, they may be grown people, but they're just really dumb. It's like, wow, you are really dumb. Yeah. But Daniel was not that kind of person. He can interpret dreams, explain riddles, solve difficult problems. It's all areas of life. And, and, and you also see this too in a lot of ministries and a lot of uh, Christians in these last days. Is they're just one zoned, which is very, very dangerous. They, they, you know, they only get onto one topic and that's it. They don't talk about all the topics we need to talk about in these, in these last days. They don't talk about uh, uh, chemtrails. They don't talk about uh, uh, everything. Everything health. Uh, everything in the Bible. They just stay in one topic. It's very, it's very dangerous to stay in one topic of the Bible. I see that a lot of times people just stay in their favorite zones. 
Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Dave, uh, I say David, da- David too, but Daniel is filled with divine knowledge, understanding. He can interpret dreams, explain riddles, solve difficult problems. He was multitasked. Tasked. <laughs> he knew about everything. Because he had the God of everything inside of him. Oh, the Holy Spirit, Jesus, yeah. Call for Daniel, he will tell you what the writing means. It's that everybody could figure out what's going on today if they would just get born again, get spirit-filled, and then pray, and then listen to Jesus on a daily basis. They can understand what's going on. But see, some people are just too... They, don't, they, they think they can just give the information without praying. Are you out of your mind? Things are changing so fast right now. I see people trying to guess, trying to figure out without praying. It's, it's so stupid. I mean, just let Jesus fill your mouth. when you Fill your heart. When you speak, let Jesus speak. And so many people just don't know how to talk. They don't know how to write. They don't know how to, you know, uh, 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 let the Holy Spirit give them accuracy in these last days. It, it, it's, it, you know, and, and it's... Hey, you need to slow down. You need to put your prayer time in. If you don't do your training, you're never going to get up that hill. You could have the best bike in the world. I was looking at bikes the other day. You know, there's some of those bikes that those guys are riding in Tour de France. Uh, $10,000, $15,000 bike. You could have that $15,000 bike. And they have multiple bikes like that. Giant, you know, and they have Trek or whatever. Didn't Lance Armstrong win the Tour de France on a Trek bike? Anyways, you could have the best bike, the best shoes and everything, but you don't do the training, you're not going to make the Tour de France. <laughs> you look like an idiot. So many so-called Christians without the Holy Spirit, you know, they buy the bike. They have the shoes. They have the jersey. They can wear the yellow jersey. Ooh, I'm the Tour de France. And they don't go anywhere. All right, you get on the hill. Ooh, ooh, and they're crashing. It's like, you know, it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's because they don't do the training. Don't skip the daily training. You skip the daily training, you only hurt yourself, which is prayer, which is hearing and obeying the word and doing the word. So many people want to get the truth out, but they're not doing the word. You have to do the word. Are you uh, uh, born again? Get born again. Are you staying spirit-filled? Are you praying? Are you doing the word? If you're not, you're just going to hurt yourself. Some people do that. It's crazy. Why do you want to do that? Call Daniel. So Daniel was brought in before the king, verse 13. The king asked him, Are you Daniel? <laughs> One of the exiles brought from Judah by my predecessor, King Nebuchadnezzar. Verse 14, I've heard that you have the spirit of the gods within you. <laughs> and you're filled. Oh, I love this. Filled. With insight. So you should, if you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you should know how to fix the problems in your life. You should know how to make the right decisions. You should know what you should be doing. It. Yeah. Making the right decisions, what to do, what not to do. So many people are guessing, and it's ridiculous. If you guess in 2015, you're dead. <laughs> I've heard the Spirit of the gods is within you, and that you're filled with insight, understanding, and wisdom. Oh, yeah. He said, my wise men, my ABC, CNN, <laughs> MSNBC, oh, the New World Order, have tried to read the Bible. The religions around the world, <clears throat> even Christians, tried to read the Bible, the writings on the wall, and tell me their meaning. But they cannot do it. They cannot do it. Da, 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 they cannot do it. I'm told that you can give the interpretations and solve the difficult problems. If you can read these words and tell me the meaning, you'll be clothed in purple robes of royal honor, and you will have the gold chain placed around your neck. You'll become the third highest ruler in the kingdom. Daniel answered the king and said, keep your gifts. Well, you don't hear that too often, right? <laughs> uh, the politicians and religious leaders are all, you know, most of them right now are just loving money, lovers of money. The Bible calls it filthy mammon. Now, money's not evil. It's just that people love it, and then they just twist the message to get the money. That's ridiculous. Never compromise uh, uh, for, for some, what, for 30 pieces of silver? Are you out of your mind? 10 pieces, 20 pieces, 30 pieces. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I fear God. <laughs> Don't you? <laughs> Keep your gifts or give them to someone else, but I'll tell you what the writing means. Verse 18, your majesty, the most high God. Your ma- so verse 18, your majesty, the most high God, Jesus, gave sovereignty, 
majesty, glory, and honor to your predecessor, King Nebuchadnezzar, right? Either his father or grandfather, whatever. He made him so great that people of all races and God, Jesus made him so great that the people of all races, nations, and languages trembled before Jesus in fear. Well, tremble before Nebuchadnezzar, I mean. They should tremble before Jesus. Now, this is interesting. You don't hear this in school. You don't hear this in history. Who set up King, uh, King Nebuchadnezzar? Jesus did. It says it right here. You don't hear that. Jesus, verse 19, Jesus made King Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, the empire, world empire, so great that people of all races, nations, and languages tremble before King Nebuchadnezzar. Okay, he killed those he wanted to kill and spared those he wanted to spare. Talking about King Nebuchadnezzar. King Nebuchadnezzar honored those he wanted to honor and disgraced those he wanted to disgrace. Now, realize Jesus put him to power. Now, he turned, of course, to Jesus after his craziness. Verse 20, but when... His heart and mind were puffed up with arrogance. I see that on the earth today. I see these leaders. I see the, the CEO of Apple. I see different organizations and people. They're puffed up with arrogance. And even Christian churches think that they can't, ministry, they can't be touched. Oh, if you don't preach what Jesus wants you to preach and teach in these last days, you're going down. There's no time to play these games anymore. This is politicians, these are religious leaders, <clears throat> Christians. Listen, the best thing that can happen to Christians right now, if they're in air, if they're in cold lukewarmness, if they're in backsliding condition, the best thing that can happen to them right now is that they get a spanking. Yeah. If, they, if God corrects them right now before it's too late, yeah. In order to get in order to get them ready for the coming of Jesus. Yeah. <clears throat> Anyways, uh, Verse 20, but when his heart and mind were puffed up with pride or arrogance, he was brought down from his royal throne and stripped of his glory. Now this guy is not, this guy, uh, was, he was just a secular, non-religious, you know, you could say, he would make me would satanic, but I'm not talking, this guy wasn't a Christian. King Nebuchadnezzar was a doofus. But God dealt with him, and I'm telling you, <clears throat> now look at these corporations and these leaders, and people on the earth right now, they think they can do whatever they want to do. They can change the Bible to say whatever, it, you know, to fit their agenda. That's very dangerous. I see these uh, organized Christian, so-called Christian organizations changing the scriptures to meet their agenda. Uh-oh. Uh, you know, whatever their agenda is, change the Bible to, to meet their agenda. Uh-oh. 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 <clears throat> You're cursed. Same what happened to this guy, <clears throat> secular king. This wasn't the king of Israel. This wasn't David. This wasn't, you know, <clears throat> you know, somebody like that. No, no, no. But when his heart and mind were puffed up with arrogance, he was brought down, smashed from his royal throne and stripped of his glory by Jesus. He was driven from human society. He was given a mind of a wild animal. He lived among the donkeys. What an ass. All right, and he ate grass like a cow. He he lost his mind, was drenched with the dew of heaven, until he learned. Until this secular, crazy Babylonian Empire king Nebuchadnezzar, until until he learned. And this is what this is what's gonna this is what is happening on the earth right now. You have so many people that refuse to get born again, or they get born again, they backslide, and they wonder. You know, why isn't everything working out? Blah, 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 blah. Why doesn't, you know, you know, until you got to learn that Jesus, the Most High God, rules. And you got to do what he wants. If you don't do what he wants, he's going to spank your butt. He's going to allow things and situations to come in to correct you. All right. Oh, yes, yes. Well, uh, when the children of Israel came out of Egypt, <clears throat> they were, you know, uh, chosen of God to go into the promised land. They were going crazy. They were backsliding and snakes came up and bit them in the, in the desert. A lot of them died. All right. Yeah, that's what happens when people get off the path. Oh, I was jogging here in, in Irvine, California, Southern California here. Several months ago, <clears throat> and I was running in, in the hills of Irvine. That's a city. Uh, I think it was founded in 1971 here. <clears throat> Anyways, Southern California city of Irvine. Beautiful. Planned, I mean, to the 10th degree. 
uh, or uh, whatever. Anyways, uh, people come from from around the world to see Irvine to see how the city planned it. It's they d- didn't just let it grow; they planned it. It's really nice. Anyways, uh, 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 I was jogging along the paths in this city, and I almost stepped on it, 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 just in the hills on a rattlesnake, a huge rattlesnake. Can you believe it? Yeah. <laughs> If you get off the paths, oh, you know, and a lot of Christians, a lot of people, they wonder why they go through the misery they're going through. Even people that have accepted Jesus, it's because they're not listening to the correction of Jesus. Jesus says, go this way. And then, no, I'm not going this way. I'm not doing what you want me to do. Fine. You're going to get bit by a snake. You're going to get bit by a snake, and it's not Jesus' fault. You're going to get your butt kicked in 2014 and 2015, 2016 until you change. All right, yeah, I mean, why don't people listen? I mean, I, I've gotten my butt kicked and go, uh oh. The Lord said, hey, it's not my fault. It's your stupid actions. Okay, sorry. Whoa. God's no respecter of person. He has no favorites. He will allow people to be smacked by the enemy bit by the snakes, etc., etc., until you learn to, to go in the right direction. He'll tell you a thousand times, a hundred thousand times, if you don't listen, it's not his fault. Until he learned that the Most High Jesus rules of the kingdom, kingdoms of the world, and Jesus appoints anyone he desires to rule over them. The <clears throat> New World Order thinks they're hot stuff. Oh, we rule. We rule the media. We rule the world. We rule as the Vatican. We rule as Obama. No, they don't. Got this. They're, they're, they're dogs on chains. They're, they're donkeys with a collar. They're jackasses. They think they have this little power in their hands. Obama thinks he has this power. $12 million house, vacation house, this, that, billion dollar vacations. They got millions of dollars been given to them every year. They're presidents of the, they're nothing. They're less than nothing. They're like a speck of sand underneath the feet of a human. They think they rule. The Pope thinks he rules. The Vatican. Oh, the IMF, the Corporation, the New World Order, the Bilderberg. They think they rule. You're nothing. You're less than nothing. God, Jesus rules over the kingdoms of the world. You just happen to be there as a, as a jackass until you get destroyed. <laughs> and he appoints anyone he desires to rule over them. Now, of course, he gives people free will. And they can choose evil, but they will be judged. And then he says, verse 22, you are, his, his, you are his successor, O Belshazzar. This is the speech of Daniel to the king. And you knew all this. See, it's, it, the, the punishment is even greater to people that know what to do and don't do it. Yeah. You knew all this. See, the father or the grandfather, Nebuchadnezzar, became a doofus. And Jesus punished him. But he repented. He did, he did it more in ignorance than anything. Uh, well, more so than this guy, Belshazzar. Oh, like the Apostle Paul was killing Christians, but he did it in ignorance. Whereas Ananias and Sapphira in the book of Acts, they knew what they were doing and God killed them. Whoa! Uh, oh, Belshazzar, you knew all this, yet you have not humbled yourself. Verse 23, for you have proudly defied the Lord. This is what the this is what Apple's doing. There's a lot of corporations and banks are doing. This is what Obama's doing. This is what the New World Order is doing. You have proudly defied the Lord of Heaven. The Obama administration, most of the Republicans and Democrats, most politicians and governments around the world. This is all the same. Religious leaders, you have proudly defied Jesus. You have proudly defied Jesus, Lord of Heaven. And have had and, and had and have had these cups from his temple brought before you. You and your nobles and your wives and concubines have been drinking wine from them while praising gods of silver, gold, bronze, iron, wood, stone. That's what they do. Gods that neither see nor hear nor know anything at all, but you have not honored the God, Jesus, who gives you the breath of life and controls your destiny. <clears throat> this, is, this, is, this, is, this is a warning. This is a warning these last days. People are now, even Christians, they're not honoring Jesus in these last days. They know what to do, what's right, but they don't do it. You have not honored, and, and these corporations are not even Christians, and I'm talking about Christians and non-Christians. 
They're, they're bragging around the world. We can do whatever we want anti-biblical on the earth. And they think they're going to get away with what they're doing right now. They're not. You have not honored the God who gives you breath of life and controls your destiny. <laughs> Verse 24. So God has sent this, hand, this, this message to you. <clears throat> oh, this is the message. Excuse me. Verse 25, this is the message that was written. Many, many tickle you farson or parson. That was the writing on the wall, but nobody could understand it. Verse 26, this is what the words mean. Uh, many or many means numbered. God has numbered the days of your reign. I can hear this in the spirit this morning. God has numbered the days of these corporations. Obama's days are numbered by Jesus. The Vatican, the Pope, religious leaders. Christians that are playing games, corporations that are, are Apple corporations uh, that have, are spewing their anti-biblical behavior, uh, corporations and businesses in the U.S. and around the world, spewing out their uh, anti-biblical behavior. I, I was listening to an article, uh, reading an article earlier, I think it was the, 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 the the government of Ghana, I think it is, saying that they don't want Obama's gay agenda to come into the country. A lot of African countries don't want Obama, his gay agenda in their country. <clears throat> yeah. Why do you think Africa is getting their butt kicked over the years? Yeah. And even now, getting invaded like all the time. Because they don't want to bow to the New World Order. <clears throat> and they get invaded. All right. Me, me, uh, God has numbered the days of your reign and has brought it to an end. Whoa, Jesus. Bringing you to an end. I, I think that's exactly what the Lord's saying about Apple. And the Lord's saying this about politicians and and uh, and uh, <clears throat> Hollywood actors. People that get in front of the camera and they go anti-biblical knowing what they should be doing. And they don't do it. Knowing that it's anti-biblical. You got uh, 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 sports uh, people, uh, 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 you know, icons uh, or, or famous sports heroes or... Or even media heads talking in front of the camera. If you spew your junk, you listen, you're going to have to give a count. Saved or unsaved before Jesus. And if you tick him off, and you are, a lot of them tick him, ticking Jesus off. It says here, you have been brought to an end. Your reign has been brought to an end. <clears throat> and you see it every day. Tackle meaning, verse 27, weighed. You have been weighed in the balances and not measured up. Parson, verse 28, uh, divided. Your kingdom has been divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Babylonians and the Medes and the Persians came out. Then at Belshazzar's command, Daniel was dressed in purple robe with gold chains. He knew. He knew this was right. He hung a gold chain around his neck. Daniel said he didn't want it, but they made him wear it. He was proclaimed the third highest ruler in the kingdom. This is kind of interesting, really, because if you are not afraid in these last days to speak for the Holy Spirit, speak by the Holy Spirit, speak for Jesus, things that other people won't speak and say and do. You don't have to worry. God will provide for you. God will help you. God will protect you. He did it to Daniel. Daniel, uh, no matter how crazy the, the Babylonians or the Medes and the Persians became, he was always promoted right in the middle of the crazy empires. And right in the middle of the crazy uh, uh, New World Order Empire now under Obama, and the Pope, God will take care of you, just like he did Daniel, if you'll do what he wants you to do. If not, your days are numbered. Uh, he was proclaimed the third highest ruler in the kingdom. Look at this. That very night, verse 30, Belshazzar, king of Babylon, uh, the Babylonian king was killed. And Darius the Mede took over the kingdom at the age of 62. Look at that. Whoa! You can read almost the same identical uh, uh, happenings in, in Daniel chapter 4, but I chose to, to read Daniel chapter 5. I'm telling you. I know it, uh, people don't like to hear it, but it doesn't matter. It's exactly what's happening. And when I thought about Apple, I thought, you know, how is it going to be destroyed? How How is it going to get their butts kicked? How is it an affront to Jesus? Well, they're just spewing on the, their anti-biblical behaviors. The CEO, the company... Daryl, don't you like iPads and iPhones and all that? Did I say I didn't like that? I don't have one. I have I have the droids and all that. But it's, it's more than just uh, 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 technology. The technology will continue. But companies that are have been for years coming against Jesus' plans and will. I'm thinking, wow, wow. How, how could Apple get their butts kicked? 
Well, if China really goes down on a major slope, which you can tell they're on a slippery slope right now, and you have Apple uh, factories over there, I mean, it could just be a total snowball that just crushes Apple. Think about it. All right, some of the headlines right here. Just remember, it's not all fuzzy, warm feelings when you when you serve Jesus. Don't forget, in the New Testament, Ananias and Sapphira screwed around. And Jesus killed them. Jesus killed Ananias and Sapphira dead for a lie. In the New Testament, we're not talking about Old Testament, we're talking about New Testament. <laughs> Jesus still kills people. <laughs> Whoa, capital punishment from Jesus. All right, just thought I'd warn you. All right, uh, here's one, uh, newamerican.com. The UN, the boss, the chief, the leader of the UN right now, UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon. I mean, seriously? What's wrong with that guy's name? Anyways, UN boss, U.S. gay marriage ruling, he says, is a great step for human rights. Uh, General, uh, UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon, bye-bye. Uh, I wouldn't want to be in your shoes. Well, I am the UN Secretary General. I'm Ban Ki-moon. Yeah, you're going to be kicked over the moon, all right? Yeah. He claims that the U.S. Supreme Court ruling redefining marriage for all 50 states was a great step forward for humanity, for human rights uh, you start, uh, 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 in, in the United States. Anyways, I don't care who you are. The U.N. boss, great step for human rights. It's an it's a, uh, it's a anti-biblical step. All right, but you have to know that the United Nations is an ungodly, antichrist organization. That's why Obama is using it to rule the world and will continue to use the UN to rule the world. Uh, I am predicting probably there's uh, uh, probably that the UN will probably use their headquarters instead of in New York or whatever. Uh, will have a will probably use uh, uh, Jerusalem as a headquarters for the UN and Obama and the Pope. Probably. Hello, the third temple that uh, some people think that won't be built. I think the third temple, I personally believe the third temple will be, re will be rebuilt or be built in the near future. Time will tell. And I think Obama and the Pope want it to be built and probably more like a UN headquarters uh, slash third temple. Or Obama comes in there and just takes it over for the UN and to rule the world from Jerusalem. Right. Why not? The UN is ungodly. Obama is the Antichrist. The Pope uh, already, uh, the Vatican already owns Jerusalem. Look at this article right here. China warns Russia. China warns Russia that, quote, state of war now exists with the U.S. Did you see this article? The EUtimes.net. I mean, we're living in, uh, uh, I mean, we're not talking about Iraq here. When the U.S. Uh, and NATO forces and the coalition went into Saddam Hussein's backyard and, and yard and took him out, uh, it was nothing. It was a piece of cake. There was never really an opposition, uh, uh, a, a worry that the U.S. wasn't going to take over, you know, Iraq, and and the invasion wasn't going to be successful. It was a total, it was a total success. It was uh, a giant coming against an ant, really. When you're dealing with China and Russia and the BRIC countries, uh, the the Antichrist, Obama, and the Pope have to be very careful because you're dealing with superpowers. You're dealing with countries that have nuclear weapons. And so they have to deal, the, the UN, uh, Obama, the Vatican, they have to deal with uh, Secretary of State uh, uh, Illuminati, devil worshiper John Kerry. They have to deal with countries differently. They have to uh, uh, attack them behind the scenes. All right, Syria is already being attacked behind the scenes. Iran is being attacked behind the scenes. All right, you have Russia being attacked behind the scenes already. Uh, you have uh, China being attacked, and I believe even part of this uh, uh, stock market tumble is exactly uh, 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 an economic assassination against China uh, because they don't want to follow the rules of the of the new world order. Yeah, and and uh, you can hear the Vatican saying, "We created you." We brought, we brought uh, 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 jobs and factories into your country. How dare you not obey us? Yeah. Same thing with Russia, you know. 
the great whore of Babylon, the Vatican, and all its corporations and banks and IMFs and, and world banks and all that. They, they, they scream at the countries, we gave you, we made you, how dare you come against us? Yeah. So they attack them from behind the scenes. And I believe this is, this is what, well, it's not just a belief. Russia has been attacked financially. Russia is weathering the storm pretty good right now. I believe China is being attacked. Uh, you know, their stock market is being attacked. And it wasn't that strong to begin with. Uh, but the Vatican and the, in the U.S. government is screaming, hey, we made you, we gave you blah, 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 blah. We expect you to do what we want to do, all right? I believe that's also happening, you know, the U.S. is doing that, the government, with NASCAR. That's why NASCAR seems to be going backwards instead of forwards, speaking about racing. Yes, NASCAR has been giving, you know, oh, they've been giving them tracks and all this money over the years, and now they're saying, hey, we're calling in these favors. We're, we want you, NASCAR, to do uh, what what Obama wants. Now, most NASCAR fans are disgusted with Obama and the Obama administration because you have uh, Obama doesn't like them either. You know, they, they cling to their God, they cling to their guns, <laughs> and their gold. <laughs> Uh, anyway, I'm not going to read this whole article, but a uh, very interesting article at eutimes.net. China warns Russia that state of war now exists with the United States. <clears throat> now, I don't know people people are thinking the war may come in the future. Well, this article says the war is, is uh, you know, China is already at war. China is already at war with the U.S. That's true. Russia is already at war with the U.S. <clears throat> Think about it. Just because uh, we don't see it like, oh, it's, you know, the troops are coming in, Operation uh, Desert Storm, you know, doesn't mean they're not being attacked. There's 140 wars going on right now around the world through the Vatican, through the U.S., all right? But I agree with this. China, with this article, EU Times, China warns Russia that state of war now exists with, with the United States. I believe China is already at war. With the U.S., I believe it's, it's with Russia. I believe that the BRIC countries are at war with the U.S. and with the Vatican already. Yeah, think about it. They're being uh, 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 they're being attacked behind the scenes. Obama is arming mercenaries. The Vatican is arming ISIS uh, to attack Syria right now, to attack Iran right now. They're attacking their they attack China and Russia. Attacking the countries, the BRIC countries, financially. That's why they're trying. That's why the BRIC countries are trying to stay together, trying to keep keep afloat. But they're being attacked right now. So China is at war already with the U.S. Or the U.S. Let me say it this way: the U.S. and the Vatican are at war with China right now. At war also with Russia. All right. At war with Syria. At war with Iran right now. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs, or MAFA, is reporting today that Federation, today the Federation has been informed by the State Council of the People's Republic of China, PRC, that a de facto state of war now officially exists between that Asian nation and the U.S., U.S. of A. According to this report, following the, you know, people can say whatever they want, it's all, it's already happening. July 4, 2015, yeah. I don't care. It's, it's all, the war is already going on right now. Economic wars, they're sending troops behind the scenes. Now they have to be careful because the U.S. is sending troops all, all around Russia's borders. They're sending it to the Ukraine, trying to attack Russia that way. They're trying to attack Russia by sending troops into Syria, into uh, against Iran. They're, trying to ch they're, they're attacking China by attacking the stock markets. Uh, uh, of China, they're tr trying to attack the oil prices to attack and putting sanctions against Russia. So the war's already on. The war's not coming. The war is already on with with Russia and China. According to this report, following the provisions and protocols of the May 8, 2015 Russia-Chinese Cybersecurity Agreement, that states a signatory to this pact that anticipates the outbreak of hostilities is obligated to immediately inform the other so that, so that war preparations needed to protect critical infrastructure can be undertaken. 
of course, you're going to attack them behind the scenes. Hopefully they, hopefully they fall. Hopefully China and Russian markets fall before any bombs have to be carried out. Yeah. I'll show you another article about that as well on other countries. Economic assassinations, like ec economic hitmen, you yeah. know. To inform others, so China is telling Russia we're already at war. War preparations need to protect critical infrastructure can be undertaken. The PRC or China has informed the Federation or Russia that these conditions now exist, leading to the grave warning from China of the PRC. Remember, it's the uh, People's of the Republic of China, PRC. Okay. Leading to the grave war warning. Oh, pop-ups. I hate pop-ups. Get out of my face. They do. They think I'm going to buy something because you get it in my face. No. Leading to this grave war warning from China, this this report explains has been the catastrophic loss of over, this is the stock market, $3.7 trillion in wealth has just disappeared from the Chinese stock market, all right, because of the downturn. You don't think the Vatican's attacking them? Oh, yeah has been the catastrophic, they're calling it a catastrophic loss of over $3.7 trillion in wealth from Chinese stock markets over the past fortnight, or just this week, that has seen them plunge by over 30% and has led to panic among financial investors and ordinary citizens. Like, China knows they're being attacked. Russia knows they're being attacked. The BRIC countries know they're being attacked right now. As to the cause of this devastating meltdown, this report continues, PRC or China experts have stated that evil, quote, evil market forces are going to, are going short to ruin Chinese economy. Hello? And even suspecting Western-backed investment predators, quote, of lurking behind the turmoil with U.S. banking giant Morgan Stanley among the names mentioned. China is at war with, with the U.S. and with the Vatican. Russia, same. The BRIC countries. Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa. And other countries are at war right now, right now. And I know they're not saying it, but it's true. With the Antichrist, which is the U.S. president, and the Vatican, which controls governments around the banks around the world. The governments and banks. Similarly, the report notes five professors from China's top universities issued a widely distributed public letter a few days ago alleging sinister market forces were exploiting weaknesses in China's financial system for profit. Yeah, China's system has always been weak. Just because you have a billion people doesn't mean you, you know, are strong in every area. The only reason the U.S. hasn't collapsed yet is because of Jesus. I'll tell you that right now. In society, and people pray. I believe that's why Jesus has me here and other people in different parts of the world. Alleging sinister market forces were exploiting weaknesses in China's financial system for profit. Yeah, I think this is being escalated. I said, I've been telling people this. 2015 and 2016 will be the uh, 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 plan of Obama and the Vatican with all the New World Order players to collapse any country that's coming against them or, or doesn't want, not coming against them, but doesn't want to join the New World Order fully. So 2015 and 2016, they got to take out every country in that's not in the New World Order. Boom! Take them out right now. Take out the people of the USA, take out China, take out Russia, the BRIC countries. War. Sinister market forces. Well, yeah. You don't think they're hacking? You don't think they're uh, hacking and, and manipulating and moving things around? Oh, yes. <clears throat> Exploiting weaknesses in China's financial system or profit. <clears throat> they're going after their weaknesses. Comparing the situation to when President Obama's puppet master financier George Soros and others bet against East Asian currencies during 97-98 Asia financial crisis. Who do you think is causing the crisis? The banks and the corporations the, the, the run by the Vatican. They're pulling their strings right now. 
If China would be doing what the New World Order wanted it to do fully, you wouldn't be seeing this 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 attack against against their market right now. No. So what precipitated this devastating Obama Obama regime led financial attack? I said that Obama and the Pope, the Vatican, are at the forefront of this, which is really the New World Order, right? Yeah, but they're the leaders of it. <clears throat> To what precipitated this devastating Obama regime-led financial attack ab- upon China? Experts in this report say it was de- detailed early last month by Washington Post News Service, who in part said, quote, hackers working for the Chinese state breached the computer system of the Office of Personnel Management in December. U.S. officials said Thursday, as of June 4th, and the agency will notify about 4 million current and former employees that their personal data may be compromised. So basically, you have these computer wars going on, hacking by both countries to protect, protect themselves. The hack was the largest breach of federal employee data in the recent years. So if this is true, uh, China is, is telling and warning the U.S., don't screw with our system. We can hack you as well. As to the wisdom of the Obama regime attacking uh, 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 China's financial markets in retaliation for their alleged hacking of U.S. government servers, the report continues, it appears to, to be both juvenile and ill-timed as China, with its holding of over nearly $4 trillion in foreign reserves. So China holds $4 trillion in foreign reserves for, to, to keep their economy afloat, compared with U.S. has for their economy $121 billion. With China citizens having a staggering 21 children, 21 trillion saved. So the Chinese people have bank accounts with 21 trillion dollars. Compared to American counterparts, counterparts who have only 614 billion. So p- people are wondering, you know, uh, who's going to win here, right? I don't think China really wants a war. I think China's trying to survive, but the, the Vatican and Obama won't allow them to go off by themselves. And making the situation even more fraught with danger, experts in this re- in the report warn in a further response to the Obama regime's attacking them, two senior Chinese military leaders yesterday called on the People's Liberation Army to beef up all its naval capacity and combat readiness amid a higher risk of warfare on their doorstep. And what? Well, 2015, 2016. Here we go. As I said yesterday... Even in the Terminator movie, Genesis Terminator, they're talking about 2016. I mean, 2017 being the year that everything hits the fan. Skynet, or, uh, yeah. I'm not going to read all of it right here. Uh, In a 5,000-word article published yesterday in People's Daily, the Communist Party's flagship newspaper. Now, don't forget, uh, we've been told over the years, by the New World Order media, who's communist and who's not. All right, so for years, everybody's saying, oh, China's communist, Uh, you know, uh, uh, the fascists, who the fascists and communists are around the world. But they never point to themselves because the Vatican is communist, the Vatican is fascist, Obama is communist, Obama is a fascist, he's a Nazi. That's what he believes, all right? And if you don't know that, then I can't help you because that's who he is. And that's how uh, they're always talking about redistribution, redistribution of wealth. They're talking about having everything. You have nothing. Uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. Hunger Games mentality, right? Don't forget, don't believe the New World Order media when they say, well, they're communists, but we're not. Actually, Obama and the Pope are the communists trying to rule the world, are the fascists. All right. Uh, in a 5,000 word article, blah, 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 the Communist Party's flagship newspaper, General uh, Kai Yingting, commander of the PLL Nanjing Mar- Army China Area Command, and his political Commissioner uh, General Zheng Wangping warned that the PLA should learn lessons from the war with Japan that ended 70 years ago. The Chinese generals further stated, quote, there has been a profound, there, ha- there have been profound challenges from t- t- uh, territorial disputes on our country's p- periphery, 
to your political blah blah blah. Let me just skip down here. We have to be we have, we we are putting ourselves on combat preparedness, uh, and that's and that's at the front of our minds. To how the Obama regime, I love how they they say that's true, is responding, preparing for a war with China. However, this report notes World War Three is now the hot news with Pentagon brass. So they're saying in this article that everybody's talking about in the Pentagon World War Three, World War Three, and let me just say, World War Three is probably already started. You can see it right here. When I read scriptures from the book of Daniel, it says that the Antichrist will be furious, Obama, with Russia and with China. And will attack them furiously. With fury. On the United States preeminent... Uh, let me just skip down here. Um, World War Three is now the hot news with Pentagon brass. As the Wall Street Journal just reviewed, the Ghost Fleet by Peter Singer and August Cole. Uh, Singer said, one of the United States preeminent futurists is now walking the Pentagon halls with an ominous warning for America's military leaders. World War III with China is coming. It's probably already started. World War III has probably already started with Russia and China. It just hasn't... Uh, it just hasn't been, the pimple hasn't been popped yet. <laughs> it's already there. <laughs> Is that gross? But it's true. <laughs> In fact, uh, they warn even America's advanced new F-35 fighter jets may be blown from the sky by their Chinese-made microchips and Chinese hackers easily could worm their way into the military secretive intelligence service. The Chinese army may one day uh, occupy Hawaii. Well, from the scriptures, I know that Obama and the Pope will overcome China and Russia. So, yes, a lot of things are made by China, made in China, made from China, whatever. <clears throat> yes, they can be hacked from Chinese, but you're dealing with technology, but you're dealing with something else as well. You can't forget this is part of the equation. When you're dealing with the Vatican and Obama, the Antichrist and the False Prophet, you're dealing with fallen angels. Not, they're not fallen angels, but the fallen angels give Obama and the, and the Pope the upper hand. Now, if it wasn't for the fallen angels, uh, Obama couldn't do what he's doing in the Pope uh, already and are and will do. So the only reason, it's not because Obama's smarter. It's not because the Pope's smarter. Hell no. Uh, these guys are the dumbest people on the planet. The New World Order people are the stupidest people on the planet. It's not because they're so smart that they're advancing their demonic agenda. It's because the fallen angels are helping them. Yeah. And the Lord has all of this mapped out in the scriptures. He knows exactly what they're going to do before they're going to do it. How do, and how do they think they're going to win? How does Obama and the Pope and the New World Order think they're actually going to win against Jesus? It's already been talked about in the scriptures for thousands of years. So if, you're, if, if your enemy already knows what you're going to do, you're screwed. Jesus already knows what they're going to do before they do it. And Jesus has already won. Oh! Woo! And it's more than just uh, our economy is better than your economy. Talking about uh, who would win a war between China and the U.S., blah, 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 blah. Well, I already know that uh, uh, because the fallen angels. Now, of course, I mean, what does the Chinese have? What do they have? Well, uh you have probably hundreds of millions of probably praying, born-again, spirit-filled Christians. <laughs> We're just keeping it afloat, yeah. I'm telling you, if it wasn't for the born-again, spirit-filled Christians in China, in the U.S., around the world, it, this world would already be in ashes, yeah. But I already know what the Bible says. China and Russia will lose in the near future, yeah. And it talks about here, uh, a report was released in 2000 describing the potential outcome of a 
uh, Asian-American conflict. Uh, even over Taiwan, the United States won the war handedly. Nine years later, the nonpartisan think tank revised its analysis, accounting for, accounting for Beijing's updated Air Force, its focus on cyber warfare, and its ability to use ballistic missiles to take out American satellites. Rand's 2009 conclusion... The United States would ultimately lose an air war with China and an overall conflict would be more difficult and costly than many had imagined. Yeah, but uh, they're not factoring in. It's not just about the number of planes, not just about your... See, what they're doing right now is they're attacking their economy, trying to, trying to cause China to go into a total tailspin, you know, softening up their target. Oh! with economic warfare right now. That's what they're trying to do with, with Russia. Russia has uh, bounced back from a lot of that right now. So they're both being attacked. Whoa, there's another article I want to pull up here. So China warns Russia that the state of war now exists with the United States. And I, 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 I agree. Russia and China and, uh, are already at war. Or let me say it this way. The U.S., uh, the Antichrist and the False Prophet, the U.S. and the Vatican are, all, are already at World War III with these countries, yeah. There's another great article uh, here. I'm, uh, this is the last one I'm going to read. So I read the scriptures. I don't have to get into the scriptures. I just read them. Uh, people don't realize this. They need to go and read books like The Economic Hitman uh, that you can find on Amazon. Uh, Econo Economic Hitman. I think that's the name of it. Uh, I'll just skip. I'm not going to read these articles, but just some of the articles. I'll, I want to get to one more article right here. Some of the headlines right here at truthinaction.org. Top economist says the government is preparing to seize your 401k pensions. Well, that's already happened in part, uh, but uh, that's what Greece is doing. Uh, and that's what the U.S. is going to do to its own people. All right. So if you think uh, uh, that you're going to have your savings in the near future, no, don't trust in your savings. Trust in Jesus. <laughs> They're gonna have a reason. Oh, we had to take we had to take your uh, your your four hundred one k. We had to take your uh, uh, if we don't take your savings accounts. Oh, suckers! You don't take your pensions. They don't really need to take them, but they're taking them in, in order that people can't uh, 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 resist the Antichrist Obama regime, the Pope Obama regime. Yeah, here's the one I want to look at right here. Uh, same. Same line of economic assassination or warfare by the Antichrist and the false prophet that they're doing right now with China and Russia. Here's one right here. Ecuador. U.S. orchestrated coup attempt in Ecuador. Washington wants all independent governments toppled. Global research website right here. Washington wants all independent governments toppled. I love that. Read this article. I don't have time to read it. Washington, when you say Washington, it's the Vatican, which controls Washington. It's the Obama administration. So the Vatican uh, and and the, the U.S. government. Or you could say that the, that the Antichrist and the false prophet, uh, uh, Washington, uh, want all independent governments toppled. Want all independent governments toppled. And the headline is U.S. orchestrated coup attempt in Ecuador. Now, this is nothing new. The Vatican has controlled uh, who's in government for years and years and years and years and years and years, right? And has controlled the U.S. government probably for the last hundred years. But I love this. U.S. is orchestrating a coup attempt in Ecuador. Well, that's what they did. That's what they've been doing for years. They used the CIA around the world, which is run by the Vatican. It's basically the U.S. government, but it's the Vatican-run governments around the world doing this. And if you don't think your government is part of the New World Order, it is. All right? If you're not being attacked by the U.S., your government is part of the New World Order. <laughs> so where, wherever you live on the earth, if your government right now is not being attacked by Obama and the Pope, then your government is already part of the New World Order. Yeah. U.S. orchestrated coup attempt in Ecuador. Washington wants all independent governments toppled. 2015, 2016. Now, now, now. If you're independent, if you refuse the New World Order's total agenda, they want you toppled. Regime change by U.S., which is really Vatican U.S., orchestrated color uh, revolutions. Coups. Naked aggression. 
Ecuador is in the eye of the storm. It talks about, uh, this is nothing new. Uh, governments and, and empires have been doing this for years. But the, the, the new kids on the block or the governments that rule the world now is the U.S. and the Vatican. Vatican run U.S. really. And so you have the false prophet, you have the Antichrist, and basically, I'm not going to read the whole article, but it's a great article from Global Research. And the, and the, the thing that I just want to just say right here is this one statement. Washington wants all independent governments toppled. China, bye-bye. Russia, bye-bye. Brazil, bye-bye. India, bye-bye. South Africa, bye-bye. Ecuador, goodbye. Syria, Iran. That's really what was behind 9-11. Yeah, that's been behind every war. And this is, what's been, this is what's happening right now. If you want to understand what's really going on with the stock market, what's really going on around the world with ISIS, it's this. ISIS, the stock markets, debt, wars, it's all boiling down to all independent governments are to be toppled. That's it. They're calling it the regime change by the U.S. orchestrated uh, 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 regime, uh, but it's really Vatican U.S., which is really false prophet, Pope Francis, Vatican, and the Antichrist. Yeah. Independent governments to be toppled. Independent, all independent governments to be toppled. That's what's going on. If you understand this, you'll understand what's going on in all the news. Put it together. And you, then you'll understand also what's going on in all Bible prophecy. It's right before our very eyes. Let's pray. Father, thank you <laughs> for this terrific Tuesday, 7-7, <laughs> Thank you, Lord, we get to see this. Thank you, Lord, you showed Daniel this. You showed Moses this. You showed Noah this. You showed Abraham this. <laughs> you showed David this. You show us this, Lord. <laughs> as, it, as it is recorded in Daniel chapter 5, you rule. You've already spoken what the future already holds. You've already won. They don't, they are not, they, they, how could they even think they're going to win? It's just ridiculous. But nevertheless, the great deception is on the earth, Lord. And I pray that you continue to break people out of the great deception, wherever they may be. As you broke Nebuchadnezzar, out, break the people out. As, uh, man, you did that to a, a, a Babylonian king. Wow. But his son or grandson was stooped in pride and arrogance, and you toppled. You actually killed that guy. And Lord, that's exactly what you're doing today across the world. Anybody that gets in your way, boom, up. you're removing them. Well, do what you want to do. Let your kingdom come on earth as your desire is in heaven for it, Lord. Let your desires that you have in your heart from heaven for the earth this day, July, and all 2015, 2016, and beyond, let your kingdom come, your will be done on earth. That doesn't have it on a daily basis. Father, thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name, by your spirit, amen. All right. Love it. World War III is already happening. Wow, it's amazing. Uh, uh, of course, it's going gonna, it's gonna to grow. It's going to increase. Uh, uh, everything's going to get more and more uh, 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 crazier. Crazy. It's going to get uh, 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 faster and quicker, all the events. I mean, wow, we're only in the seventh month, but it seems like, like I said yesterday and every day, it seems like the treadmill is going 100 miles an hour, 1,000 miles an hour, uh, because they know, the fallen angels know, the Antichrist, the, the false prophet, they know, the new world order, the Luciferian worshipers, they know they have a short time before the return of Christ Jesus, the Messiah, to the earth to take it over. And they're trying their last ditch attempt, their last attempt to take over this planet and try to stop Jesus. It's crazy, but that's they're crazy. All right, Daryl Lawson Live signing up. I'm here Monday through Friday, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, Sunday mornings, 10 a.m., all California time, DarylLawsonLive.com. I'll see you tomorrow. I love you. Bye for now.
everybody, what's going on? I'm Fabian for Liberty, and I wanted to talk about an article that came out in the London Independent uh, that was based on a prominent historian from the University of Cambridge asking the question, is it 1914 all over again? As many of you know, 1914 was the year that World War uh, I started, also the year that the Federal Reserve was created. And fast forward to 2014, 100 years later, um, we see the stranglehold of the Federal Reserve and how it's stretched its tentacles into literally pretty much overwhelming and taking over the private sector in America, funding the perpetual war system uh, across the Middle East and around the world. And we also see prominent historians now, mainstream economists or, you know, very well-known and respected economists, almost every week now coming out and saying, look, you know, this doesn't end well. This is an unsustainable system that's been created. It does not end well. And of course they know that because, as I've said, hedge funds and historians have actually a pretty big link. Uh, a lot of the hedge funds that I, that I know and people that I speak to at, at private equities, some of these hedge fund managers, a lot of them have historians on payroll. They have historians that they bring in to help them analyze trends and forecast future events, which is something that any real investment firm uh, will always look at. Well, what are, what's the world look like a year from now, five years from now? And so they'll bring in a lot of these Ivy League mainstream historians to help them kind of form that vision of the world uh, several years out or maybe six months out or, or whatever time frame uh, they may be looking at. But this is important because, you know, if, if you were on the fence of, okay, you know, maybe this is hyperbole, uh, America will always be America, um, then... This is real concrete, real astute people that are now coming out and, and, and pretty much, you know, it's like the emperor has no clothes anymore. I mean, the, all of the work that the establishment puts in, the mainstream media puts in to trying to tell you to go out and shop, everything's fine, the bread and circuses, people are breaking through that illusion and they're breaking through that fraud pretty much and they're saying, wait a minute, everything that I've been told um, growing up, everything that I'm told today about how the economy is recovering really may not be the case. I mean, last week we found out that, you know, football uh, tickets weren't selling uh, as strongly as they thought they would for these playoff games. Now, that could be the weather, but it also could be the fact that people just don't have that disposable income that they once did had because the middle class is under assault, right? Uh, but this was an article... Uh, I'll post the article down below, but this professor from the University of Cambridge, Mark... Mar Margaret McMillan, she also writes for um, uh, the Brookings Institute. It was a 200-page report that she put together. A couple of things she said was that um, the tensions between uh, China and Russia, China and Japan uh, could definitely bring in the, the Americans or bring in America because of the alliance that we have with Japan. And this is exactly what led to World War I was all these different alliances that were taking place. And so... When Artsuk Ferdinand, Ferdinand gets killed, um, you know, and then Russia comes in and then all these other countries start jumping in because of these treaties that they have. Well, America has treaties with South Korea, Japan, all these other Asian countries as well, that if they're attacked, it's really an attack on America. Or you look at NATO uh, and the treaties that are there. Um, but what's really interesting is that they also talk about how England and Germany looked at each other before World War I. Germany was pretty much coming up. Their economy was super strong. Um, and the, Eng the English Empire looked at them as a threat to, uh, to the English you know, um, Empire. I mean, at the time, prior to World War I, Germany had a lot of satellite colonies in, in China, satellite colonies around the world. England didn't like that. Um, so they churned up the, the, the propaganda. And eventually it led to this war against Germany. And Germans in the 20s and 30s were painted as like the most despicable people when you had people like Churchill, who by all accounts is a full-blown war criminal for creating these blockades against Germany that led to the starvation of hundreds of thousands, if not millions of innocent people that had nothing to do with the war uh, and really created the pathway for the rise of Hitler as well. Very interesting times, World War I, and, and the comparisons to today are pretty stark. Um, but one of the biggest comparisons were, is just like you had England and, Chi England and, um, and, and Germany 
kind of, you know, England really saying, look, Germany is a potential threat. Today you have America, in essence, saying that about China. China is a rising superpower. There is no doubt about it. More so economically, but their military is rising uh, to exert influence over the East China Sea. Uh, that is completely undoubtable. It's so obvious that it's taking place, so much so that the Wall Street Journal reported that the Pentagon has already drawn up plans for war with China, just like America had drawn up plans for war with England in the 1920s in invading Canada uh, as well. I'll post the article, like I said below, you could read it. History does repeat itself. Um, contrary, this article says it doesn't, but then it goes into how it does. Um, history does repeat itself. And if we can look at history and then look at current events, we can really project what to expect in the near uh, future. I'm Fabian for Liberty. Thank you so much for watching. Please share this video if you enjoy it. Check out the new FabianForLiberty.com website as well. I'm out. Uh, good morning, Young Boys Oh, hey, how's it going? It's Steve here. Oh, hey, Steve. How are you? Very good, sir. I was hoping I caught you at a bad time. No, no, that's all right. I was just uh, doing a little bit of research, reading and study. Fantastic. Have you got time for a, a few questions? Yeah, sure. Any time. Hey, I was wondering if you've seen what's happening in uh, the United States at the moment uh, with, with the new laws they're introducing. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Um, actually, I was listening to a video um, yesterday against American citizens to uh, silent dissent. Now, the video that I was listening to yesterday, um, this new law that they're passing in the Congress and Senate's just passed and Obama's due to sign it. Actually, he's already signed it before he's gone on holidays to Hawaii, but he hasn't told anybody about it, but he's already signed it, so I believe. Um, apparently, it's all done because they've written all of this up because of the Wall Street protests and the Occupy protests all over America. So what it is, it's in retaliation to the uh, people of America protesting about Wall Street bankers and the control of the Wall Street bank bankers and corporations and uh, APAC, the Jewish lobby and military industrial complex, they're pulling hold over America. So what they've done is um, drawn up this new bill and rushed it through and voted on that and it's in reply to um, the Occupy movement that's going on in America. So so it seems we they fell for another uh, Hegelian dialectic problem, reaction, solution. Yeah, exactly. Um, virtually what it is, um, the same usual uh, criminals, you know, let's be truthful about this, you know, these old crusty old perverts, because that's all they are, these crusty old men have come up with a new bill and same tactic, same rubbish that they talk about. Oh, it's Al-Qaeda and, you know, any US citizen who's helping Al-Qaeda, like, give us a break. You know, Al-Qaeda is the CIA, Al-Qaeda is America. Um, you know, look at what happened over in um, Libya with the overthrow of Gaddafi. Um, they were using Al-Qaeda fighters who were in Iraq to help overthrow Colonel Gaddafi. So, um, you know, for, this, for these old perverts, because that's all you could call them, crusty old perverts, um, ancient, it should be thrown out and tossed out. Oh, we're, we're, we're passing laws for US citizens that, you know, have anything to do with Al-Qaeda. It has nothing to do with Al-Qaeda. It's about dissent, dissenting against the government. So whose agenda do you think they're fulfilling when they go ahead and attack all the uh, countries that they're attacking at the moment? Well, actually, they're, they're moving ahead with the project for the New American Century. Um, I encourage people to, you know, read up about the project for the New American Century. Actually, there's two plans in play. The first one is the project for the New American Century. What they're doing is uh, doing the will of the international bankers, Wall Street and London bankers and military industrial complex, APEX, 
uh, APEC and the corporations, but also there's a clean break plan and um, they're carrying out all of that for Israel, you know. These wars are for virtually Israel. Who's going to um, benefit by it? Israel. They'll be the dominant force in the Middle East, um, controlling all of the Arab or Muslim nations. So who do you think is in control of the Senate and the Congress in the United States, Canada, the UK, and Australia at the moment? Who's in control? The bankers. International bankers. Actually, if you... See, if we talk about this, we're going to be called anti-Semitic, but, you know, they can... That's an old tactic calling people anti-Semitic. Oh, you're anti-Semitic. You hate Jews. But the Whoops. families that... Can, that own and control the Fed, uh, U.S. Federal Reserve and the Bank of London and the uh, Bank of International Settlements. Oh, yeah, Bank of International Settlements. Now there's eight families, Jewish families that own that. Now from there, um, and the American Federal Reserve Bank and the Bank of London. From there, they they shoot out into the Wall Street bankers and London bankers and from there they go out and uh, it splits up into the military industrial complex where they have their uh, investments in the military industrial complex and then on the other side of the ledger they, uh, from there it splits off into the mainstream media where they own 96% of the mainstream media in the world. Um, and then from there, other corporations, food corporations, farm corporations, etc., etc. And then from there, other little banks. Um, so all the way through from the beginning, right down to the end, um, it's all under Jewish control, Jewish family control. Um, some people say, and it's been said about the protocols of the elders of Zion, now, people would deny that they even exist or anything like that. Um, interesting, if you look at it, and uh, there is a few learned people in the world, if you, if you read what they say about the, uh, the elders um, of Zion, um, every protocol has been fulfilled. Isn't that funny? So for a document that doesn't exist in you know, plan and uh, for a plan that doesn't exist. Amazing how everything's been fulfilled virtually. Otherwise, um, if you look at what's happening in the Middle East, they've succeeded. They've, they've moved into uh, they've moved into Libya. They've taken over Libya. Got rid of uh, Colonel Gaddafi. They've put that country where they want it. Um, so, in other words, before uh, NATO and Britain and France attacked it in America, um, they were a rich country. Now, they bombed it back to the Stone Age and then uh, the con they put the country in debt so that they have to borrow money from the International Monetary Fund, the IMF, and um, they owe money to the IMF to rebuild the country. Um, and then who gets all the contracts, or the British and the French again uh, get all the contracts to rebuild the country. It's all it's all about profit. I mean, look at it. There was, uh, we won't say because Colonel Gaddafi was a, you know, saint, um, but also you can't call him a, you know, dictator and a, a supporter of terrorism and all the rest of it, because he was supported by the Americans and the CIA. Um, but they did exactly what they wanted to make profit and the, prof uh, the way how they're going to make profit is invade each of these countries, bomb it back to the Stone Age and then the country will have to borrow money off the World Bank or International Monetary Fund to rebuild the country and they've got the country in their pocket um, under their control and in debt for the rest of um, yes, sir. eternity, and that's all what it's about. Yes, now sir. then on top of that, they get contracts to rebuild the country. It's, it's economic. So bomb it back to the Stone Age, 
then um, make the country borrow money of the Zionist Jewish bankers, and then uh, the Zionist Jewish bankers then pass on the rebuilding to um, uh, the corporations. It certainly is economic vandalism. You know, somebody asked me, uh, do you think World War Three will start? And, and the, the thing I had to say to them is that if you haven't realized it, but World War Three actually started on September 11, 2001. That's when, that's when the war on, that is when the war on planet Earth was uh, instigated by the Bush administration. We have September 11th was the day that they declared war on the world and they announced it intention. If we look at the World Trade Centers, what were the World Trade Centers all about? They were buildings where they housed banks, they housed corporations, they housed place, uh, big corporations and banks from all over the world and different countries. Now, what they used to do is, you know, uh, do business together, start new companies, go out and start new ventures and projects and everything like that. Now, by destroying the World Trade Centers, if anybody wants to look at it, I mean, you can tell who was behind it. Who would want to destroy all of that? And by destroying that, the people behind the scenes, well, they're not behind the scenes anymore. We know who they are. You know, the four or five of the main players, we know who they are. Um, what they were saying is they're going after world control. They want world control of all of the resources um, throughout the world. Plain and simple. Well, Mr. Osboy, thank you very much for your interview. It's, it's always been fascinating talking to you. And indeed, we, we must uh, stay in touch a little bit more often. Yeah, anytime, Dave, anytime. Thank you, sir. God bless. Sure. And God bless and uh, have a good day. Same to you. Saber rattling. He promised to counter what he described as Russian aggression by increasing military buildup through NATO's presence near Russia, NATO a key aspect of U.S. security policy. Now, the Baltic Sea region is quickly becoming a friction point between Russia, NATO, and the U.S., with NATO military exercises underway and a lot of close encounters. I was joined earlier by James Carden, Washington correspondent for The Nation magazine. He started by telling me for what NATO is preparing. It was recently announced that um, NATO is going to be sending in 4,000 uh, troops to Lithuania and Poland as part of the European Reassurance uh, Initiative. Um, that's a $3.4 billion um, initiative designed um, ostensibly to reassure our NATO allies in light of what has been happening uh, in eastern Ukraine. In addition to that, the United States has sent in the USS Donald Cook, which is a um, missile class destroyer um, about 50 miles away from Kaliningrad. Now, Kaliningrad, uh, a lot of Americans don't know, is a Russian port between Poland and Lithuania, and they have a major naval base there. Um, and so the effect of, of, of these um, maneuvers by the United States and NATO um, has been to uh, increase tension in the region. So what exactly is the aggression that they're worried about? I mean, this is a lot of this is a lot of militarized presence that they're gearing up for. Yeah, what they what they claim to be very worried about is um, a repeat of what has happened in eastern Ukraine. The entire Europe was calmed down in the knowledge that the Pentagon would do anything in order to protect Europe from Russia. On Monday, the Pentagon deployed a pair of F-22 fighter jets to southeast Romania in an effort to deter hypothetical Russian aircraft. The US Air Force aircraft arrived at the air base on the Black Sea, less than 400 kilometers away from the Russian military stronghold of Sevastopol on the Crimean Peninsula. The US Air Force has deployed F-15 Eagle Air Superior to fighter aircraft to Iceland and the Netherlands. Several NATO countries as well as non-members such as Finland and 
and Sweden are sending planes to Estonia for the first massive Air Force exercise to feature civilian airport aimed at training for interception of aircraft losing contact inside Finnish airspace. The two-day exercise called Rammstein Allo 1 will kick off at the Estonia's Amare Air Force Base next Thursday. It will be involving warplanes and air crews from Belgium, Spain and Poland as well as non-NATO members such as Finland and Sweden. This is an emergency broadcast. This is a direct message to the Department of Defense, all four branches of the military, active duty, service members, veterans, their families, state governments, local governments, and the media. We are going to display 100% irrevocable proof that there is a global move, not just here, but all over the world, to militarize police and to put standing armies on the streets to suppress the population and to carry out political operations. It seems strange that at the same time when we have huge military drills, military hardware movement and FEMA training in the US, in Europe we have 600 members of various European military forces recently conducted an exercise in the German North Rhine province ready to be deployed in the event of civil unrest or war. Why in the world Italy streets would be patrolled by Chinese police? That shows a very strong message that Vatican will be partially protected by China during a major crisis. Finland Defense Minister Jussi Niinistö said Russia doesn't pose a threat to his country. But then why would Finnish government send a reminder to 900,000 soldiers to prepare for war with Russia? Because it's a mind game tactic used by the mainstream media. On top of that, additional 40 guided multiple launch rocket systems and warhead rockets worth $150 million sold to Finland, just in case NATO stockpiles military hardware in Norway. So we have uh, what are called preposition uh, gear, both in caves and on ships, and it allows forces from the United States to come out and fall in on gear that is already forward deployed versus bringing all that gear with us. M1A1 tanks, amphibious assault vehicles, artillery and logistics equipment support NATO allies. So any gear that is already forward deployed both reduces cost and speeds up our ability to support operations in crisis. So we're able to fall in on gear that is basically ready to go and respond to whatever that crisis may be. It always take it takes time to deploy forces to a certain area. When you have material, equipment, preposition. You can uh, fly in the personal and you will be faster ready to do conduct operations. So that's uh, always an advantage to have that preposition uh, in stocks in order. The equipment will support exercise cold response 16 starting later this month. We fit easily together when we are operating. In the last 10-15 years we have been operating together in Afghanistan and other places. And uh, when you move to Norway, you will always operate in three dimensions because we have a long coastline, we have land territory and the air. President Obama is back at the White House this morning after a week in the Middle East and Europe. Air Force One touched down Monday evening at Joint Base Andrews outside Washington. We spoke with the president yesterday in Germany in a wide-ranging interview. He had just announced 250 more American troops will go to Syria. They will help in the fight against ISIS, also known as ISIL. Us dismantling ISIL is a priority. And although we are not going to be sending ground troops in to fight, uh, we are going to try to find out what works and then double down. And one of the things that's worked so far is 
us putting special forces in for training and advising of local forces, mm -hmm. but also intelligence gathering. Let me pivot to China. Mm -hmm. uh, Europe's Secretary of Defense has been in the region. How aggressive do you see the action in the South China Sea? And do you worry that they will cross some line in which you'll have to respond more aggressively? I've been consistent since I've been president in believing that a productive, candid uh, res uh, relationship between the United States and China uh, is vital not just to our two countries but to world peace and security. We're a lot better off with a China that feels confident. It's not a zero-sum game. It's not a zero-sum game. What is true, though, is that they have a tendency to view uh, some of the immediate regional uh, issues or disputes uh, as a zero-sum game. Uh, so with respect to the South China Sea, uh, rather than operate under international norms and rules, uh, their attitude is we're the biggest uh, kids around here and we're going to uh, push aside the Philippines or the Vietnamese. But it doesn't mean that we're trying to act against China. We just want them to be partners with us and where they break out of international rules and norms, we will. Uh, we're going to hold them to account. And what about North Korea, finally? North Korea is a massive challenge. Uh, our first priority is to protect the American people and our allies, Republic of Korea, Japan, that are vulnerable to the provocative actions that North Korea is engaging in. Uh, they are erratic enough. Their leader is personally uh, irresponsible enough that we don't want them uh, getting close. But it's not something that lends itself to an easy solution. We could obviously uh, uh, destroy North Korea with our arsenals, but aside from the humanitarian costs of that, uh, they are right next door to our vital ally, Republic of Korea. One of the things that we have been doing is spending a lot more time positioning our missile defense systems so that uh, even as we try to resolve the underlying problem of, of uh, nuclear development inside of North Korea, we're also uh, setting up a shield that uh, can at least block uh, the relatively low-level threats that they, uh, they're posing right now. President Obama has launched the US most massive military buildup close to Russian and Chinese borders. This piece of information clearly shows a very strong message of the beginning of a major conflict between major superpowers such as NATO, Russia and China. As you are watching this video, we have missile defense shields being set up and being installed in Israel, in North Korea, Eastern Europe and Russia. When United States is testing its new intercontinental ballistic missiles, we have Canada asking to join US missile shield to enhance national security. Canada has suggested it may join the US missile defense shield. Then we have the installation of the US missile shield in Eastern Europe along Russian border. Russia has opposed US and NATO plans to deploy anti-missile systems close to borders with Russia. Washington Washington says that the anti-missile system would not threaten Russian security. Russia will restore a missile attack warning station near Crimea to counter an increasing NATO activity in the Black Sea. We have 4,000 cruise missiles pointed at Putin that would enable Obama to deliver precision-guided non-nuclear airstrikes anywhere inside Russia in less than an hour. When Putin calling Obama's new missile shield in Eastern Europe along Russian border a direct threat, we have Poland setting up a new missile shield, and then we have Romania setting up a new missile shield. We have US anti-missile base in Poland put by Obama, and in Kaliningrad we have Putin threatening to put nuclear missiles there. We have Putin activating S-400 defense systems all around Russian border with Eastern Europe, and we have nuclear missile systems patrolling Moscow streets. We have Norway and the US planning to establish a new military radar post in Vardo, Finnmark, in addition to the already existing 
ES Globus 2 radar system. Let me show you on the map where all the missile defense shields are being set up and being installed in Eastern Europe. Just look at this map. Here we have Putin in Moscow placing S-400 defense systems all around Moscow and we have some in Kaliningrad. Here we have Obama setting up a missile defense shield in Poland and Romania and putting radars in Norway. And in all these countries we have NATO and US military training at unprecedented scale. Watch my new video on military training and military hardware movement by Putin and by Obama in these countries. The link to my new video, as always, will be below in the description box. Just a little bit more than 70 years ago, we had a great war between major superpowers. Today, in the same place, on the same map, we have the same superpowers in the face of NATO and Russia preparing for a major war. Just remember, only a little bit more than 70 years ago in the same place on this map, millions and millions of people died fighting for the same forces that are preparing a major conflict today. My biggest concern is that during World War II, there was no nuclear weapons available in such a big amount that is available today. And in the same place on this map, there was no nuclear power plants, so the war was limited in scope. While the Allied forces lost hundreds of thousands of citizens during the course of the conflict, at least 27 million Soviets were killed during what's known in Russia as the Great Patriotic War. The Eastern Front also proved the deadliest for Nazi Germany, with 74% of their war deaths occurring there. Almost every single Soviet family suffered the horrors of this war. Only 37% of all men drafted to the front line survived till the end of the conflict. Now I want you to pay close attention to this information. Washington continues to prepare a global strike, according to the Deputy Foreign Minister of the Russian Federation. The United States continue its destabilizing activities. This includes the creation of a global missile defense system, the continuation of the development of tools capable of inflicting a disarming strike without using nuclear weapons. The rapid global attack system of the United States provides the establishment of a hypersonic system which will be able to apply high precision non-nuclear strikes from American territory at targets on Earth within an hour. This system will cause a non-nuclear strike disarming strategic nuclear forces, including those of Russia. 24 generals from 13 NATO countries gather in Latvia to train joint operations. We are prepared to fight and win if we have to. NATO's focus will expand from assurance to deterrence, including measures that vastly improve NATO's overall readiness. Lithuania is hosting large-scale military exercises involving the country's forces as well as soldiers from other NATO member states. Another Baltic state, Estonia, started a major military drills involving NATO troops in the country's regions near the Russian-Estonian border. NATO is deploying an additional four battalions of 4,000 troops in Poland and the three Baltic states. Do you remember when we had in the news 
saying that NATO would deploy 4,000 troops to the Baltic states. And when the next day that figure increased to 4,000 NATO troops being deployed to the Baltic states, Poland is set to double size of its armed forces. The Polish army will be bigger. We envision a substantial increase in the size of the army by at least 50%. Poland's armed forces, which currently have around 95,000 personnel, would grow to 150,000 personnel. Poland launched an ambitious 10-year defense project aimed at upgrading its military forces. According to Deputy Defense Minister Czeslaw Mroc Izek, in April 2016, Poland would choose a supplier of anti-missile defense system, which will reportedly cost around 10 billion US dollars. In total, Poland was planning to spend around 42 billion US dollars on its military upgrade over the next 10 years. Poland's military modernization program includes a missile defense shield, anti-aircraft systems, submarines, combat drones, armored personnel carriers. The Georgian army has begun the two-week Nobel partner military exercises together with American and British forces. We're already going under a form of martial law. So let me show you some of the news we already went to in our earlier report, then I'll go to a smattering of the other evidence right here. Much of it from the Department of Defense's own website. You have massive military gear being cached, armored vehicles, machine guns, helicopters, night vision, Humvees, with the police departments around the country. California has gotten the majority of it, uh, along with Oklahoma and other areas to population. Texas has gotten double what California's gotten, and we have 10 million less than them. Oklahoma got basically double what California got, even though the crime rates are very low, because it's about suppressing the Patriot population, just like they have on the map in Jade Helm showing Texas, Utah, and other areas as hostile. This is pre-caching to fight real Americans that won't go along with gun confiscation, you name it. Now, when you see InfoWars.com articles I'm going to show you, you can go directly to the site, click on it, and go to the Department of Defense's site. DOD training manual, extremist founding fathers would not be welcome in today's military. Close quote. Army-sponsored reports suggest new police force. That's World Net Daily. What's that out of? A stability police force for the United States, RAND Corporation. This is the martial law plan that I've been covering for 18 years. War gear flows to police departments, New York Times. Feds preparing to invade Texas, list state as hostile. They are preparing, not saying they're gonna invade or take over, they are preparing for the takeover. And that's in the John Warren Defense Authorization Act of 96, 97. They admit for insurrection by legislatures and governors. They just hope, just like Obamacare, you don't actually go read this stuff. Obamacare is great. It's really working. We have to make sure America writes the rules of the global economy. Because if we don't write the rules for trade around the world, guess what? China will. Why in the world we would have such strange things happening on the land of freedom? What is very strange is that we have FEMA conducting biggest drills ever inside the US. We have all those FEMA executive orders set in place. We have Walmarts closed and being converted into detention centers according to some videos on YouTube. We have an unprecedented military hardware movement inside the US. We have this movie Amerigedon coming out on Friday the 13th. We have another movie called X-Men Apocalypse. 
we have FEMA and DHS conducting right control drills. On top of that, do you remember those articles saying that DHS has purchased more than 2 billion rounds of ammunition? which is enough to fight a war for 10 years. Do you remember those articles saying that US government has purchased 30,000 guillotines? Do you remember red, blue, green lists? Do you remember FEMA coffins? When at the same time we have US and NATO setting up and activating missile defense shields in Eastern Europe on Russia's doorstep also in North Korea and inside the US. What do you think? Please share your thoughts by leaving a comment below this video. There are no perfect nations out there, but it's still refreshing to see that there are still nations out there that honor God and His Word. Uh, this is an extraordinary report from the European Times. Um, it's called Russia Issues Grave Warning. Prepare to defend Earth. Fallen angels have returned. An extraordinary report prepared by the Military Scientific Committee of the Armed Forces MFC, in MSC on the just completed trials of the Almaz Anti high energy laser directed energy weapon system project by the 27th research central research institute 27 cri states that their immediate disbursement to the federation allies india china and brazil is needed to defend our planet against interdimensional entities who could soon attempt to recapture earth wow important to note about this report are that the references to interdimensional entities contained in it date back to the Great Patriotic War, World War II, when the Soviet intelligence services confirmed the German Nazi regime's existing communication link with what can be described as falling angels slash demons, but which our planet oldest written records refer to as the gods small G's Wow so this that right there that's exposing the great coming alien deception where they're gonna act like uh, aliens are beings from another planet coming to either help us or attack us and this and that when it's all only just fallen angels and demons it's, it's a great deception and they have technology where they can pull this deception off uh, via project blue beam and all this other stuff and that's what the heliocentric model will uh, assist too will aid and assist this great deception the, the heliocentric model where uh, Big Bang happened and all this garbage and then we're, we're going we're all the planets are our planets and our solar system are going around this giant central Sun which is nothing but Sun worship mass that's all it is when the Bible describes our closed system as being ge geocentric where the earth is stationary and it doesn't move and God rotates everything around us where our where our uh, sky and all that rotates around us uh, I'm gonna continue on with this article. With this uh, article here, let's see. These fallen angels slash demons. This report explained were once vanquished from our Earth about five through six thousand years ago, and what was then referred to by the ancients as the Great Overturning, that nearly instantly froze millions of woolly mammoths of Siberia, destroyed the vast city-state known as Atlantis and is recorded in the stories, religions, and legends of all of our planets, peoples, as the Great Flood. Kind of hard to read this. Uh, most importantly, however, to have been destroyed in the Great Overturning, this report continues, was the main geographic geographical area inhabited on the earth by these fallen angels slash demons located from the Indian subcontinent through the Himalaya and mountain range to what is present-day Ukraine hmm it's interesting because it seems like the dark forces are trying to start a war with Russia 
using Ukraine. None of us want a nuclear war. We want to enjoy our lives. We don't want to see bombs falling down on our cities because somebody's over there trying to prop up the dollar or whatever they're doing, but we don't want any part of nuclear war. You know, Russia's turned back to Christianity and it looks like we're running away from it. That's embarrassing. We need to run back. Our nation needs to run back to the cross as fast as it can and then be and be friends with Russia and help them uh in their in their journey to to you know get godly and all that stuff we we're two christian nations so we we started out christian but we need to you know, we need to, to join up with those guys and and have two christian nations against all terrorism in the world and just make the world a peaceful place instead of having new world order uh hijack the west and and try to throw Throw the rest, throw the West up as a sacrifice against a, a a nation that has returned back to Christ and Jesus and the laws of God. They learn a, they learn a lesson on godless Soviet uh stuff that 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 stuff don't get you nowhere but failure and a collapse. So they've learned from the 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 godless uh, anti God Soviet system and and they have run away from that back to the cross and it looks like uh, the the West is is being led away from the cross to. God knows who, who, what. All right, I'm going to continue on with the article. The two major Sanskrit epics of ancient India, the Mahabharata and the Ramayana, this report explains fully details the interaction of these fallen angels with the Aryan race include the use of the Vimana airspace vehicle described as an apparatus an apparatus which can go by its own force from one place from one place to place or globe to globe verifying this verifying this incredible ancient claim of the power of the vimana to not only transverse our own planet but those of others too yeah that's all falling into that common alien deception this report says this report says can be found in the symbol of these fallen angels slash demon called the called the swastika being discovered all over Earth. Include prior to World War II when the soldiers of the United States 45th Infantry Division proudly wore this symbol prior to the rise of Nazi Germany. Well, I thought that symbol also came from like Indians or whatever, but everybody's trying to hijack it. Uh, in fact, this report notes. The earliest known object with the swastika motifs is a bird from the tusk of a mammoth from the Paleolithic settlement of Mezin, Ukraine, dated to 10,000 BC. And its ancient use also been discovered in the uh, Mississippian era sites in the Ohio and Mississippi River, River valleys. The Hopi and Navajo Indians of North America among the Celts ancient Germans, Finns, and too many other worldwide cultures to mention in just one article. To our human race reconnecting with these fallen angels slash demons, this, this report says appears to have occurred in the 16th century when a brilliant new star appeared on the sky in early November 1572 and which, which we now know to have been uh, Tycho's super, supernova occurring in the constellation constellation Cassi, Cassiopeia and which was one of about eight supernova visible to the naked eye in historical records. More critical more critical to note about the uh, ty, the Tycho Tycho whatever supernova MSC experts in this report state is that it also appeared to cause an interdimensional rift allowing humans to once again communicate with the fallen angels slash demons yeah these pretend alien guys I call the light bulb heads with the big eyes and they're and they're abducting humans so they can make hybrids so they can say yeah yeah there there is other races out there in the galaxy and we seated you here and we helped and we're coming back to help you evolve and all this nonsense just to get people not believing in the bible it's all a great deception from satan so let's let you know that right now 
and then uh, uh, this one this one guy uh, with, with the Prophecy Club made this uh, DVD can't think of it right now but he said that uh, all these people that was getting alien abducted by these aliens or whatever when they when they do the stuff to them to make them uh, to uh, make their memory come back when they're doing that they they will see with amongst the aliens like uh, blonde uh, people tall blonde people with blue blue eyes or whatever blonde hair dressed in Nazi uniforms and said that and when they abduct them uh, they never take them into outer space they always take them down into the earth somewhere so that was interesting right there I'll let you know the origin of, of where these beings are coming from is not coming from another planet it's all local so letting you know that right now uh, let's get back to what I was reading here I'm just going to read it again. More critical to note about the Ty Tycho Supernova, an MSC expert in this report, is, is that it also appeared to cause an interdimensional rift, allowing humans to once again communicate with the fallen angels slash demons slash light bulb heads slash losers who had previously been expelled from our planet, the most important of whom was the personal astrologer sorcerer to England's Queen Elizabeth John Dee. I want to interject a little something about these uh, aliens, these fallen angels, these demons. Um, people have broken up uh, alien abduction attempts by invoking the name of Jesus. So that should let you know that they're, they're, they're demonic in origin right there. It's all a deception. It's a great deception. So you can rebuke them in Jesus' name. All right. Uh, from the historical records from the 16th century about D and his... Uh, and his assistance contact with these fallen angels slash demons we can further read uh, D will perform ritual invocations of the angels and yeah fallen angels and Kelly will stare into a a, scry, a scrying mirror or crystal ball wherein a series of angels appeared Transmitting prophecies, instructions, and furious uh, pronouncements on the spiritual nature of mankind. The angels were not charitable, raging at raging at the fallen state of humanity, who have only become pro progressively worse since being sent east of Eden. They consistently liken humans to harlots, not in the sexual sense, but in the sense that they weakly allow their attentions to be captivated by literally anything except God. Hmm. I mean, maybe those were uh, some righteous angels right there. I doubt the fallen angels would say something like that. But anyway, the word of God says you're supposed to test the spirits. Any spirit that doesn't confess Jesus Christ came in the flesh and dwelt with us is a spirit of Antichrist. Over the years, over years of actions, the angels describe the ordering of the cosmos a series of instructions for ritual invocations, predictions of apocalypse, and events to come in Europe politics. Finally, the angelic Enochian language, which they explain was the Urian, uh, your language of humanity, spoken before the fall of Adam. For thee, this was not magic but religion. He supplicated himself to the angels totally. Kelly, though, uh, Kelly, though was was terrified of the spirits considered them demons and constantly begging D to cease sessions D insisted on pushing ahead overworking Kelly to exhaustion and keeping him virtually prison prisoner at Mort Lake I want to say something too that I learned about fallen the fallen angels and uh, the righteous angels the righteous angels of God they only move they only move according to the word of God and they're not they're, and, and most of the time they're not trying to get your attention unless God specifically tells them to the fallen angels on the other hand they're always trying to get man's attention or always trying to make cut deals with man oh yeah uh, we can we kidnap some people and we'll give you technology or can we do this and that and we'll give you technology that's the deals that they're always trying to cut with man so that will let you know what the fallen angels are right now and fallen angels also always always attracted human women that's how the Nephilim got formed when they came down in Genesis uh, 6 uh, whatever it's in Genesis and they came down and they made it with the human women and that formed the giants the Nephilim and then when, this, when the Nephilims uh, died or, or were killing each other or got killed 
their spirits weren't meant to be created in the first place and so their spirits was left to roam the, the, the world as demons that's what demons are the spirits of the departed Nephilim and these spirits can imitate your loved ones that passed on. Come back and impersonate your loved ones. That's why the word of God says you're not supposed to be talking to the dead. You think you're talking to grandma. And you're talking to a demon that's in, that's uh, impersonating your grandma. Alright. The angels. Okay back to the article. The angels for their part detested Kelly. Clocking him immediately that he had previously engaged in demonic grim ori magic and quickly became exasperated with both D and D and Kelly though D may have been the smartest member of the species he he was still perceived as an inconsequential inco net really yeah that's that's a uh, sound like fallen angel attitude right there mentality by the angelic hyper intelligences yeah these these aren't I don't think those are righteous angels particularly when D and Kelly began begging them for money Kelly even asked if the angels should loan him money but for all of D and Kelly's embarrassing lack of evolution yeah those are definitely fallen angels talking about evolution they would have to do because the angels had a plan and D and Kelly were on the hook yeah these, these, these guys ain't righteous talking about those fallen angels put simply the angels wanted nothing less than a new world order okay there we go so I only have to keep talking about it. those are fallen angels gave this stuff away right there run by divine principles and propose what must be one of the most dangerous ideas in western history a world religion there you go and these these entities is what has hijacked the west and Russia's trying to break away and, and do right by God and these guys want to uh, influence the puppets to to start a nuclear war that that we all will probably have to suffer for unless God intervenes well God gonna protect his people anyway but we still we don't want a nuclear war so they don't they don't speak on the behalf of the people so it's let, letting you know that Russia we we we're not for war so we're, we're all about Christ a world religion based on love and unity a, a supra Christianity or terminal monotheism now I'm back to reading the article which would not only reunite Catholicism and Protestantism but even Judaism and Islam into a fused whole all made possible of course by the technology that angels had provided for direct individual contact with the spirit agents of God instead of relying on terrestrial authority or scripture there you go that's what they want to do they want to form a one world religion a one world government under antichrist so these fallen angels are going to come back pretending to be aliens pretending to be sent from God all kind of stuff just trying to get our attention or trying to get us to trust in them but Jesus Christ is coming back and he's coming back as God with power. And the first thing he does when he comes back, he burns up his enemies. He's not coming back playing patty cakes. He's coming back to fight his enemies. So that's how the real Jesus Christ returns. He, he doesn't return as a flesh man. He returns back as a conquering king. And he's going to wipe the floor with the new world order and all these deceivers. And all things will be brought to light. So now is the time, people playing around think it's a game out there you better get on Christ's side while while you still while still time because when he comes back ain't nobody getting saved it's warfare when Christ come back he's going to be conducting warfare so everything is spiritual warfare spiritual it's all it's all from Christ it's all from his power and might and his fire and no and no nation no one will be able to stand up against the awesome power of, and, 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 and indignation of Christ so now is the time to bow your knee. Well, you're going to bow your knee now and be on God's good side or bow it later. But you're going to bow them knees. So time to humble yourself and line yourself up with the Bible, the King James Bible, the scriptures. Follow the scriptures, not perversions and traditions of man. The only one that's supposed to be worshipped is God the Father and, through, and it's through Jesus Christ. So it's, you got the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. No one else gets worshipped. And that's by that's Bible. Okay, back to the article. Combined with the foundation D had already laid for a a temporal new world order under Elizabeth, this new religion would unite souls of the entire globe, fuse all humanity 
into one state and one church all directed by angels themselves the new jerusalem so fervent were the angels that they commanded d and kelly to present themselves to the court of rudolph the holy roman emperor tell him he was possessed by demons and command him to heed the angelic message this was a death sentence but d and kelly shockingly made good on it rudolph ignored them but the the papal nuncio did not and plotted their destruction the church it seems took d and kelly's claim seriously perhaps a threat to their very existence humans talking to god without scriptural or institutional uh, mediation was not on the menu see the bible gave us the god gave us the bible so that we can know what's up we can know what's coming other than that any anybody anything could come along and tell you anything you know people say the bible is translated or whatever yeah it's translated but it's a good translation when you use the king james bible and you use a strong concordance and all that and then it, then it gives you the real meanings of the words and it's the closest uh, geneva bible is a good bible those ones closest match the settled word that's up there in heaven when the Christian on earth, this was Satan knew, and this is why Satan had to come out with all these fake Bibles by uh, Rupert Murdoch, the, the, the porn publisher, uh, made the NIV, and uh, a lot of these fake Bibles have been been uh, produced by Satanists. So y'all didn't even know that. But the King James Bible is is the, the closest there is to what the settled word is up there in heaven. And uh, when the Christian on earth, words match the settled word in heaven there's a power flow that comes down on it called the anointing and this destroys satan's kingdom so he had to pervert the word of god in in, in some cases even the new king james you don't even want to use that because it's been things switched around in there in the in the niv you have a, a a verse in there saying that jesus christ is a son of the gods small g's see that right there that's paganism that's that's the fallen angels, the little, the little G's, the little gods. God is big G, big God, the true God. All right, back to the article. To the evidence of the success of England under the direction, guidance of, of these fallen angels slash demons, this report says, cannot be denied as it began the British Empire, which the sun never set. That is until the end of the 20th century when upon the death of Queen Victoria in 1901, the German House of Hanover, of which Queen Victoria headed, disseminated their occult knowledge throughout all of the royal houses of Europe. What began then, this report grimly notes, was centuries of war de deliberately initiated and controlled by these fallen angels, attempt upon total destruction as to establish their one world religion, the most destructive uh, being world war two causing world war two to be so destructive this report continues was the german nazis successful establishment of an interdimensional transport communication device called die glake the bell allowing for the first time since 1561 a viamana air spacecraft to appear on earth in 1937 wow the previous attempt of these fallen angels to reintroduce their Viamana air spacecraft on Earth since the great overturning, this report notes, occurred on 14th of April 1561 when John D. traveled to Nuremberg, Germany using the occult mechanisms he had been taught by these entities caused to erupt a furious sky battle witnessed by all of the residents of the city in which the fallen angels demons were defeated yes praise jesus by 1937 though this report says an intact viamana viamana air spacecraft was not only in the hands of the nazis they were able to start duplicating it resulting in what are now referred to as the foo fighters a term used by allied aircraft pilots to describe various ufos or mysterious aerial phenomena seen in the skies over both both the European and specific theaters of operations. Even after World War II, MSC experts in this report say the Nazi Germans Germans remaining Foo Fighters along with the Die Glock device were secreted to Antarctica where they remain today and attested and attested to by numerous high ranking present and former Russian military officials. And it has C video there. 
to how great of a danger our planet is in due to these fallen angels slash demons reappearing with their v mana uh, air spacecraft this report warns is evidenced by the mysterious uh, December 9, 2000 event called Norway Spiral C video where a fantastical otherworldly spiral appeared in the night sky over both Norway and Sweden and which the ancients of people of our planet had all recorded was a sign that always preceded the arrival of the gods small g's Equally as critical to note about the 2009 Norway spiral, MSC experts state is that within days of it occurring, dozens if not more mysterious crafts began erupting from deep beneath Siberia, leaving massive craters and hurtling into space with one of them being tracked this week where it has taken up an orbit around our sun. Yeah. I don't believe that our sun is small and it's within the firmament under the dome the book of Enoch read the book of Enoch the course of the luminaries it tells you how our sun and moon works in this closed system as President Putin this past August 2014 classified as a potential national threat any new any news information relating to these mysterious crafts erupting from beneath Siberia. This report does note, however, it further states that what is now called the Chile Chile Abenix meteor event. If I, I I probably butchered that meteor event of uh, February 15, 2013, that exploded with 20 through 30 times more energy than was released from the atomic bomb detonated at Hiroshima. I found out about here is something about Hiroshima and Nagasaki from uh, uh, the Prophecy Club, uh, Pastor Mercy. Uh, you go to their website and you can listen to the uh, audio uh, files from Pastor Mercy. He said that God, God let them know, or or God made it known that Hiroshima and Nagasaki were Christian cities. These cities were were cities filled with Christians. And so uh, they needlessly dropped the nuclear bombs on those two cities, and and uh, God is gonna repay for that. God is gonna punish for uh, bombing his Christians. So that is something else right there. Uh, see video here. Back to the article was based on a orbital trajectory and actually an apparent attack against the Siberian region, region where these mysterious crafts are being launched from and was exactly like the 30 June 1908 meteor attack upon the same region that is now called Tunguska event. Yeah, I remember my roommate had a, a drink called Tunguska Blast and it's supposed to have been uh, the minerals gathered or, or, uh, from that area into a drink like uh, herbs or whatever. It was good stuff. Alright, back to the article. Also, and perhaps most disturbingly, this report concludes U.S. Dash EU attempts to demonize President Putin and embroil Russia in war. Yep, that's true. In fact, an elaborate masquerade designed so that these Western powers can overrun Siberia to destroy this mantle. What by all appearances seems to be an ancient defense system designed to protect our planet from these fallen angels, such demons, who are now in league with if not outright controlling nearly all the Western nations on Earth. And finally, and finally, though not exactly referred to in this MSC report, Western scientists appear to be preparing their citizens for what is to come by publishing many scientific papers this past year, uh, proving that parallel worlds exist and interact with our world. A position, mind you, first stated by the renowned French scientist and UFO researcher uh, Jacques Vallée, who describes a goal warned that what are completely called aliens from other worlds may in fact be fallen angels and demons and they're local and that's what all this globe earth nonsense is and why they protect this scam with, their, with everything they got with NASA and all their hoaxes it's all for the fallen angels so they can say they came from another uh, whatever solar system another planetary system and they came here to save us from ourselves and all kind of scenarios 
That's why I just go by the Bible. The Bible is geocentric. The book of Enoch is, is geocentric supporting um, things, you know. There's there's no proof of uh, Earth spinning around and everything like that. It is stationary. It's it's stationary. I don't know if it's flat or whatever. I I believe it's 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 uneven, but we do know how gravity actually works. Gravity has one direction, it's pulling down. Like you get a pan and you put water in it, we know gravity works that way. But they're saying that gravity the the misinformation is saying that gravity holds on to a spear in all directions, keeping everything and keeping the atmosphere held on to this spear that's flying through space for no reason and just spinning around for no reason. And when you look at the, the coordinates and the numbers that they use it's uh, 666 and all kind of stuff like that and 666 and 1,000 miles an hour or what, where, whatever it is. But it's all just misinformation, garbage supporting the fallen angels and their return. That's what the whole global heliocentric model is all about. You know, and it even got Christians, got Christians uh, falling for it because they read one thing in the Bible that said the Lord sits on the circle of the earth. If you go look at the, the Hebrew and everything, a uh, circle and a spear are very two different things. You know, you could you could be it could be a, a circle and it could be uh, not a spear, you know, and, and the Bible had both both words available um, from the Hebrew where there's a verse in the Bible was talking about where uh, where God's talking about a ball. He's actually he's talking about a ball and then another verse where he just said a circle. So if he wanted to say a ball, he would have said a ball. But the Christians say, "Oh well, it's a ball because he says circle." No, and that that, that where all the confusion is coming from. So like I told people uh, that can hear from God, I said, "Once you ask God, what well, if if Earth is a a ball spinning around, flying through space, or is that a deception?" Every time I ask them to do that, they never do it. So. You, know, you could choose to be deceived, but I, I, I choose to believe the word of God that it, as it is written. And uh, I like what the Russians are doing against the fallen angels and everything. Um, I don't know if technology can work against these these beings, but hey, at least at least you're trying. But uh, what I would do is uh, uh, Putin and leadership, you know, do some uh, fasting, fasting and prayer and, and you know. National repentance. That's what America needs to do. National repentance. And we also know invoking the name of Christ can work against these enemies. Like uh, saying, "Blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus." Uh, also, you could you could you could tell these uh, these fallen angels, "No weapon formed against me shall prosper." You battling them. Also, you could be quoting Psalm 91. You have your whole forces quoting Psalm 91. They can't handle stuff like that either. Um, it's been people, uh, Christians, that have been put in front of firing squads, and they're saying Psalm 91, and the bullets not even touch them. Uh, it's been, it's, it's been, it's been soldiers in the Vietnam War. Uh, I was, I was told about these soldiers that they were saying Psalm 91 every day, you know, before they they went into battle. And these soldiers, all of them that was doing that, made it home. Uh, made it through the war and made it home without a scratch on them, not a scratch. So. Those are things that will definitely work against fallen angels and demons and, and everything on Satan's side. So that's a start right there. And just uh, fast and uh, have your have your uh, have your people and and yourself fast and pray, and um, just ask God to uh, give you wisdom and and give you ideas from heaven on what to do to defeat these entities. All right. God bless. God bless you and your people, and and God bless all the Christians. And, uh, and all good people on the planet, in Jesus' name, amen. Uh, good day. Today, in the National Center of Controlling Defense of the Russian Federation, we hold a briefing, and we would present the evidence on the use of financing and those who support uh, terrorist groups uh, operating in Syria and Iraq. We have here Deputy uh, Minister of Defense Anatoly Antonov, uh, Head of Operative um, Group of Headquarters of General, General Sergei Rutskoy and Head of National Control Department General Mezentsev.
Good day, dear colleagues. The international terrorism is the chief threat of our times. This is the threat which is quite real. And many countries uh, like Russia know that uh, firsthand. The so-called uh, Islam State is the leader in the terrorist international. This monster of the international terrorism may be counterposed and it may be defeated. Within the last couple of months, the airspace forces of Russia demonstrated this. We are sure that to win over ISIS, we have to make uh, strong blows on the source of its financing, as was said more than once by the President of the Russian Federation, Vladimir Putin. Terrorism without money is an animal without teeth. Revenues from selling oil are one of the most important sources of the terrorist activity in Syria. They win over $2 billion annually and spend these funds to recruit fighters all over the world, providing them with equipment, weaponry, and that is why ISIS protects the source of uh, criminal oil production in Syria and Iraq. The chief consumer of this stolen oil is Turkey. According to our information, this criminal business involves the top political leadership of the country, President Erdogan and his family. We pretty often said that it's uh, very dangerous to play games with terrorists. The fire from one country may appear into other countries. We observe the situation in the Middle East. Today we shall present only part of the evidence which show that in the region there is uh, one team of bandits and Turkish elites to steal oil from their neighbors. This oil in enormous uh, quantities in industrial scopes through pipelines and thousand trucks goes to territory of Turkey. We are assured, and today we shall present a, mm, direct evidence, that the final uh, pop, mm, point of destination of the stolen oil is Turkey. Dear ladies and gentlemen, uh, to cut the channels of uh, finances is necessary. Without it, it will not be possible to fight with this terrorist organization. As Deputy Minister Antonov uh, said, the chief source of the uh, finances for terrorists is the illegal sale of oil products. To liquidate this channel, the airspace forces of uh, Russia hit objects of production, storage, refining and transportation of oil products in the territory of Syria under control of ISIS. Within a couple of months, due to our hits, we hit 32 oil refining complexes, 11 oil refining plants, 23 stations of transporting oil. We destroyed 1,080 tank trucks which transport oil products. So the turnover of this illegal oil production and transportation was reduced twice. The revenues of this terrorist organization from criminal business uh, reached three million dollars per day. You multiply it into four years. After our strikes, the revenues of terrorists went down to 1.5 million dollars per day. But bank groups still receive financial support and weapons and armaments and other material support for their activity. Some countries, including Turkey, are directly involved in large-scale ISIS business project and they support terrorists. 
The general headquarters of the armed forces of the Russian Federation has direct evidence based on our air intelligence uh, to the fact that Turkey is involved in this business. Today uh, we present only parts of this evidence. We found out three chief routes of oil transporting to Turkey from uh, ISIS territory in Syria and Iraq. Western route reaches to Turkish ports to the Mediterranean, northern goes to oil refinery Batman at the territory of Turkey, and the eastern joint is in Jizre. You will see all the chain of supply of oil products to Turkey, from production to refining. Western route hydrocarbons uh, produced not far from Raqqa by automobile transport at night time are transported to the northeast, to the northwest of Syria, then through Azaz, the territory of Syria, and Reyhanli, the territory of Turkey, to Turkish ports Derkyol and Iskanderu. In this picture, dated November 13, in Azaz, we see the automobile road which connects Turkey and Syria. We see the equipment which transports oil products. In the A square on the Turkish side, we see 240 tanks and large trucks at the B square, Turkish territory, there are many uh, trucks which wait for the border crossing. Uh, part of this equipment is um, masked for uh, civil trucks. Uh, similar is the situation not far from Reykjanli, not far from the uh, Despite military actions in Aleppo, there is a strong uh, movement of transportation in both directions, and in the Turkish territory we see lots of trucks. This video shows how these trucks cross the border without any hindrance. These are bandits and terrorist groups, uh, Jurhat al-Nusra, which uh, allows uh, large trucks with oil to cross the border. And this uh, transport is not checked on the Turkish side, and we see hundreds of such trucks. In this picture dated November 16 in Rain Hanli, you see uh, 360 uh, tanks and lots of trucks not far from the Syrian border. In the B square, there are about 160 tanks which crossed the border. In this checkpoint, we see the movement towards Syrian border, and there are about 100 uh, trucks. Space intelligence shows that after crossing the border, these uh, tanks and large trucks with oil go to ports Dertyol and Iskanderu uh, with specialized territories for tankers. Uh, part of the oil is transported to ships and goes for refining outside Turkey, and part is sold at the inside market. The turnover, daily turnover, is about one tanker a day. These pictures show the tanks waiting for uh, reloading. There are 365 such tanks in Iskanderon, about 60. Uh, the next route goes to Turkey from oil fields located at the right bank of Euphrate, one of the uh, largest centers here controlled by ISIS is the Derazor territory. Here we see many uh, oil refineries, one of them you can see here. Here we see lots of tanks waiting for loading. Here you see automobiles 
or trucks located not far from each other. Uh, at this uh, picture from taken from the air, we observed 1722 uh, oil tanks. You have to note that uh, from the beginning of our air strikes on these oil infrastructure sites controlled by ISIS, the number of these uh, trucks in columns reduced notably in this and other parts of Syria. And the environment suffers also. Uh, there are oil lakes in the sand. This is the picture not far from Raki, and you see it on your screen. The uh, trucks move to Kamishlia, and over there they wait for their turn. Uh, at the photographs here made in August this year, in this area we saw lots of uh, hundreds of trucks which moving to Turkey and in the opposite direction. So lots of oil transported from Syria goes to Batman refinery located at the Turkish territory 100 kilometers from the Syrian border. The third route to Turkey goes from oil field in the northern western parts of Iraq through Karachok, Chamhanik at the Syrian territory, and Itavan and Zaho at the territory of Iraq. These pictures show um, lots of uh, big trucks and uh, oil tanks in these territories. November 28 in the area of Karachok, at the territory of oil transporting plant, uh, we saw 50 oil tanks. And these are August uh, pictures in Chamhanik. You see 380 units uh, of uh, automobile equipment. Nothing changed since that time. Our intelligence shows that there is a strong traffic through the border between Syria and Iraq. Many such uh, trucks are noted in the areas near the border of Turkey and Iraq. The in uh, Iran Izaho we made the films and we saw the 104 big trucks. It's hard not to notice them, but to destroy uh, them by coalition. Well, it, it doesn't take place. So far, we only see the increase of a number of strategic uh, drones. The hits uh, made by coalition uh, led by the United States of America not, do not take place. So full information about the sites uh, will be presented at the site of the Ministry of Defense right after this briefing. Uh, as to the border territories of Iraq, the tankers move uh, Iraqi-Turkey border in the Zaki area and the oil goes to uh, refining plants at Batman, which was already mentioned or to large logistics centers on this route, which is located not far from Silopi. Uh, this is a picture taken from space, and you see the congregation of 3,000 tankers and large trucks. There is nothing to comment here. This is the scope of a legal business, and it's quite impressive. As a result, as per today, the criminal activity in oil sale, terrorists have no less than 8,500 uh, tankers, which daily transport up to 2,000 barrels of oil. The Russian aviation will continue 
to heat uh, oil structure of ISIS. And we invite our colleagues from coalition to do the same. Thank you very much. Dear colleagues, you uh, presented convincing proofs of mass and open stealing from sovereign countries, and I mean Syria and Iraq. Uh, the energy resources are stolen. I want to attract your attention to the fact that financial streams from oil selling go not only for enrichment of high military and political leadership of Turkey, but they uh, return to Syrian Arab Republic in big scopes by way of weaponry, ammunition, and uh, fighters of all uh, scales. Only uh, recently there were about 2,000 fighters or militants came in about 26 tons of ammunition, about 250 units of automobile equipment of uh, different destination. The Turkey side conducts such events for a long time and on a regular basis, and uh, it doesn't plan to stop it. So our information about the volume and routes of supply uh, by Tur the Turkish side of uh, equipment, ammunition, explosives, communication means and other material means, as well as uh, training of uh, terrorists, we shall uh, provide to you uh, later, next week. Uh, dear colleagues, here we have a big number of uh, mass media representatives and our briefing will be shown to m many more of your colleagues. In this regard, I would like to say the following. We know and value the work of journalists. We know that in journalist communities there are many uh, courageous people who perform their duty honestly. Uh, today we presented to you how uh, illegal uh, oil trade takes place, which results in financing terrorism. We presented convincing proofs, which <coughs> may be the source for uh, journalist investigation. Uh, we are sure that the truth uh, would make its way to the surface. We know uh, the price of Erdogan awards because Turkish uh, journalists uh, showed his uh, lies already, and for this the journalist went to prison. Uh, the Turkish leaders uh, would not retire. Uh, Mr. Erdogan would stay on. Uh, even if his face uh, would be tarnished with stolen oil. And actually, uh, our uh, friends uh, died from um, Turkish militants. Uh, you see what they do, they went to the other country and steal it. And if someone is in the way, he has to be destroyed. So, retirement of Erdogan is not our goal. This is for the Turkish people to decide our uh, purpose uh, to uh, close down the sources of financing terrorism by mutual efforts. We shall continue to present the facts of uh, this stealing, how Turkey steals uh, or robs its neighbors. Uh, control over this stealing business may be given only to the closed ones, and nobody in the uh, West uh, asked the question why the president's son heads uh, one of the leading energy companies, and his son-in-law is the minister of energy. What a wonderful family business. Is this possible somewhere else? Such uh, affairs cannot be given to anybody but to the closest ones. 
So far, uh, Western media doesn't provide any assessment of this situation, but the murder will out. The dirty oil dollars would be working. And I'm sure uh, that now uh, everything what you saw here was falsified. If uh, this is not there, let the journalists go and see for themselves. Today, uh, we present only part of the information about monstrous crimes of uh, Turkey elites, which directly finance the international terrorism. We think that uh, any sensible journalist should fight against this crime uh, of the 21st century. The objective journalist may be an efficient means in combating uh, financial and corruption schemes. We call for our colleagues to conduct uh, journalist investigations to uh, reveal uh, financing schemes to finance terrorist, terrorism. And uh, uh, stolen oil goes to other regions. The Minister of Defense of Russia will continue to inform you about uh, supplies of uh, oil to other countries by terrorists and about our airstrikes in Syria. So let us unite our efforts. We would destroy the source of financing of terrorism in Syria, and you join this work outside our ministry. Dear colleagues, everything we hear today at this briefing will be published on the official website of the Defense Ministry, both in Russian and English. We have our colleagues present here from the foreign mass media who were at the Khmeimim base and saw for themselves how, how it, it, it works uh, out there. And we'll go on to inform a journalist community based on the impartial facts uh, and efficient uh, control. So we have information about the Russian uh, Air Force base in the in Syrian territory and will update these facts and publish all the updates on our official website. Uh, thank you for your attention. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. For assuredly I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle will by no means pass from the law till all is fulfilled. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light, that all through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which gives light to every man who comes into the world. And Adam lived 130 years and begot a son in his own likeness after his image and named him Seth. Seth lived 105 years and begot Enosh. After he begot Enosh, Seth lived 807 years. Enosh lived 90 years and begot Canaan. After he begot Canaan, 
Enosh lived 815 years and had sons and daughters. Canaan lived 70 years and begot Mahalalil. Mahalalil lived 65 years and begot Jared. Jared lived 162 years and begot Enoch. Enoch lived 65 years and begot Methuselah. Methuselah lived 187 years and begot Lamech. Lamech lived 182 years and had a son. And he called his name Noah. And Noah was 600 years old when the flood of waters was upon the earth. Shem was 100 years old and begat Arphaxad two years after the flood. And Arphaxad lived five and thirty years and begat Selah. And Selah lived thirty years and begat Eber. And Eber lived four and thirty years and begat Peleg. And Peleg lived thirty years and begat Riu. And Riu lived two and thirty years and begat Sirug. And Sirug lived thirty years and begat Nahor. And Nahor lived nine and twenty years and begat Tira. And Tira lived seventy years and begat Abram, Nahor, and Haran. Look now towards heaven and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of Ur of the Chaldees to give thee this land to inherit it. And Abraham was an hundred years old when his son Isaac was born unto him. And his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was threescore years old when she bare them. And Jacob said unto Pharaoh, The days of the years of my pilgrimage are an hundred and thirty years. Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterward shall they come out with great substance. And it came to pass in the four hundred and eightieth year after the children of Israel were come out of the land of Egypt, in the fourth year of Solomon's reign over Israel, in the month Ziph, which is the second month, that he began to build the house of the Lord. And the time that Solomon reigned in Jerusalem over all Israel was forty years, and Rehoboam his son reigned in his stead. Rehoboam was forty and one years old when he began to reign, and he reigned seventeen years in Jerusalem. And Rehoboam slept with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David. And Abijam, his son, reigned in his stead. Now in the eighteenth year of King Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, reigned Abijam over Judah. Three years reigned he in Jerusalem. Zedekiah was twenty and one years old when he began to reign, and he reigned eleven years in Jerusalem. To fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah, until the land had enjoyed her Sabbaths, for as long as she lay desolate she kept Sabbath to fulfill threescore and ten years. And there went up some of the children of Israel, and of the priests, and the Levites, and the singers, and the porters, and the Nethinims, unto Jerusalem in the seventh year of Artaxerxes the king. And it came to pass in the month Nisan, in the twentieth year of Artaxerxes the king, that wine was before him. The street shall be built again, and the wall even in troublous times. And after threescore and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself, 